Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Procrastinators Podcast. I am the best guy ever, and let's see who else is here. We got Ben Saint. Minimum wage. <laughs> yeah. I- illegal band. Uh, we've got Tom Oliver. I uh, was really upset at the death of Steve Jobs. Uh, it ruined Apple, and it's cost them thousands of dollars in revenue from Damn. me personally because I will not buy their products anymore because they're so fucking bad. <laughs> well, uh, how unfortunate. Uh, we've we, got we, li- we live in a post-job society. Hi, guys. That's it's true. me, Prisoner 308. Welcome back to day 238 of my Let's Play of Breaking Out of Jail. The Warner hasn't found me yet, but he just might. Stay tuned. I really I really wish you had said Prisoner 358, because that's Casey Neistat's new company, 358, and you would have been the one political prisoner of Casey Neistat. But anyway, the, moving the on from that. The one political prisoner? Have you fucking <laughs> yeah, seen that maybe, guy? Maybe, maybe <laughs> just the first prisoner. Okay, fair enough. And welcome to Devu. Hey, buddy. In the land of Ooze, there was a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. Nice. Devu, I, nice. I just need to Illicit. let it sink in. How many, like, fangirls just squeed and glomped themselves <laughs> because Devu is on this episode? It needs to sink in I'm, for you. I'm very That's happy. True. I'm very happy to have the legendary cryptid Devu uh, <laughs> re- rear his head once more. L- lesser known cousin of Slender Man, Devu underscore the, is here for another round of the Procrastinators podcast. Yeah. Uh, what, what are we doing today? Welcome. Nate, you're you're the person. You're the guy. I'm, I'm, I'm a guy. So what, what are we doing? What are we doing? Uh, Why are we here? Listen, what have you done Listen up, us? everybody. Here's what we're doing. We're talking about jobs. We're talking about jobs. What is a job? Where is a job? Uh, please give me a <laughs> Why job. Why is a job? Uh, I deserve <laughs> a, job a job for free. I don't have to work. I, deserve... I just need a job. Just give it to me. <laughs> let's, let's get into it. All right, so here we go, everybody. A definition of a job, according to Urban Dictionary. Here's what we got. Job. Means by which at least 30% of your life is stolen from you. Oh, here we go. Oh. Uh, to enrich the owners of a company making useless shit that some other poor idiot in a job will buy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. Wow. That, I agree that, completely. That, that's What's just wrong the with hard that? And fast what is wrong with that, that at all? Yeah. Are we going to have to fight Nate? J- Tom over here. Yeah. So, yeah that's. <laughs> That I'm, sounds right. I'm, I'm with Tom. We uh, need to I'm, seize the I, means I, of production, you motherfucker. I think I wrote that definition myself. That <laughs> edited by Ben Saint, it says. Yes. There you go. Mm-hmm. There you go. Ben has I, had an allergy to jobs. Why would you edit life? my yep. perfect entry, Ben? God damn it. Now, uh, now, 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 yeah. now that we're past the wanted to leave my mark. podcast, let me, let me just lay down the law here and say well, that I am, I am post-job. I am post job. My hmm. generation is post job. We do not need jobs anymore. We are past the point of jobs, Society and now we can just do changed. things on the internet, and and that can be where we make money. Well, I mean, yeah, we're in the crowd so- source and crowdfunding era at well, the moment. At least we, we're, we're starting. We can't it all do that. Yeah, and That's I'm saying true. my generation is post job. Well, okay. He, the, the reality of the situation is most people get jobs in what? America, at least in America. <laughs> what are you saying? Uh, I, I, I am. I am one of them. I have a job. I have a job that subsidizes at the moment, like my internet activities, because I, you know, work at it and devote my time to it and stuff. But, but hey, listen, listen to the second definition of job, by the way, because this is this is also incredible, just in a different way. Uh, job, something that's impossible to find because everyone only wants to hire experienced people, even though you can't get experience if no one will hire you, and they're too damned lazy, you're too damn selfish <laughs> to train you. And then there's a quote, finding a job is such a pain. This, this Quoted was, that the 23 year old millennial. Like a guy, I'm imagining mm-hmm. a guy in like a, in like a rumpled up, uh, you know, business shirt and like his tie mm-hmm. is all pulled loose and stuff. And he's, he's like hung over. He's all, he's all scruffy and, and five o'clock shadow. And he's just been out pounding the pavement. He's been out pounding the pavement, trying to, yeah. you know, trying to work to get his to get his life on track. Yeah, it's but it's he... not at all that this person was actually sitting at their computer refreshing Craigslist for one hour a day <laughs> and deciding that was enough work. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. And then going back to play Hexbox 
damn no, that hex no, box for the no. rest of the day. Okay, there are definitely people like that, but the job market is pretty retarded, especially in Well, don't get me fields. wrong. I, it took me like three years to find a job that I now well, have, and it's a great job. It's a very good job. Well, it's Weren't funny. You, um, the, you, you, it you said that, and I was no. immediately reminded of a tweet I saw on like the, uh, mm -hmm. on uh, you know how like Twitter has like recommended things? They have like the UX Twitter. Yeah. For some reason, it like knows that mm -hmm. I went to school for design and like always recommends me all these things. And one of them was a, uh, terrifying. a job posting for a programmer, and it said like required 10 mm -hmm. years of experience in swift which is like apple's programming language and the wow. guy just like posted a screenshot of that and he's just like swift has only been around for three years oh my god <laughs> and it's just like lamau oh no so yeah it's pretty dumb it's pretty stupid well th there's a lot to say about jobs i mean these are actually really good jumping off points these two definitions because they're really they really showcase what the current generation thinks of jobs and you know what well, hey, hey, hold, hold on wait the last yeah. generation, we are in the we, Gen X is representing right here. The last generation, That's we true. are not going to be, you know, degraded with your disgusting millennial tendencies. <laughs> we are, we are post job. We, we are, I don't know, I have a Biden this Well, mo millennials, millennials failed to get jobs, and then Gen X is post job. So yeah. they, they get out scot free. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they, they win. They want to take credit for it, but really they had no choice because jobs just don't exist anymore, clearly. Yeah. That's. That's, well, uh, they're for baby you know, boomers the, only. Hate to tell you. The, the game has changed in a lot of ways. It really has. Because, like, in the old days, you know, everybody says it. But, like, in the 50s, you know, you'd, you'd go to fucking elementary school. You'd go to middle school. You'd maybe finish high school. And then you could get a job at a factory with, like, one guy and provide for you, your wife and your nine hot children. You could do that right. back in those days. Um, you could, but you now, could, uh, you could you pay can't. you could pay your way through college work, flipping burgers over the summer. It's true. Um, right. that that's true. That is generally true. I do true. think that what has happened is it's it's fucking machine learning. Basically, mm. as as long as there's anyone who knows how to do something, it mm. only takes some developer about a couple of months to create mm. a program that can do it as well. We're seeing this happen with like analysis videos on YouTube. I'm pretty sure yeah. like, mm -hmm. over the summer someone's gonna make an algorithm that can produce a Nerdwriter video, right? Th th dude, there's I've already, already been top tens, it. dude. It, it, Nerdwriter's right. not that yeah. far above a top. The last thing you want to see is tens. someone standing in your lettuce at Burger King. <laughs> yeah. and this person posted themselves on Burger King, standing on lettuce, and posted that guy it is on my favorite Chat. Cryptid. Yeah, so <laughs> like the thing so is basically many. the only way to be a There's so many cryptids. <laughs> the only fucking way. Why did we way, do cryptids for the topic the, today? Next time, next episode. The, so, sorry, dude. Sorry. No, no, no. The only way to fucking make money and have a job is to outthink mm -hmm. all humans and all robots <laughs> in the world. Right? And that's what, what basically well, all of us have been. We all got to certain things a little know. bit creatively sort of that true. people that had to figure out quite yet. The skills floor is so high for this <laughs> Yeah. No, it's the, the only fucking way. The skill floor is the only fucking yeah. way. The only thing you can do is, is to be ahead of trends, and it's the only way to make money now. I mean, just the way that it is, like, and this is the way that's technically always been. It's just the technology is advancing so fast now. Like, the only thing that anyone will pay someone to do is that they can't do on their own, or they can't like hire a machine to do at a much lower cost than it would take to hire a human. So, for example, you got like a janitor. Like, yes, you could get a robot to be a janitor in theory, but that would probably be really expensive. Yeah. So it's cheaper to just like hire a guy to push and a broom around. The fact that we have every job listing for entry level jobs requires. Mm -hmm. 25,000 years of experience, I think it's probably <laughs> because of, um, you know, the legal system and employee protection systems kind of being outdated at this point. Like, we don't have yeah. The, yeah. the frameworks, both legal and colloquial or uh, unofficial, that we have as expectations for what an employee-employer relationship should be is kind of dated at this mm -hmm. point. At this point, having a job is just sort of filling in the cracks that robots can't quite fill, fulfill yet, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you ain't wrong. And, and yeah, like all the friends I know who have like regular ass jobs at like stores, they are always worked part time, but given as many hours as you can possibly make someone do without it being full time. Yeah. yeah. Right. The classic so, thirty nine hours a week worst. or whatever should be illegal. It's like, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just in the nature that, like, as long as it's not technically illegal, these giant organizations are going to do whatever they can to maximize profit and minimize expense. Right. So, you know. But yeah, employee protection, like, I'm not trying to sound all fucking randy in here, but it does make humans more expensive to take care of because robots, you can kick them around and abuse them all day long and be a <laughs> cheapskate with them. And I think that that is part of why, uh, yeah, entry level jobs require five years of experience now. You know what? Guys, mm -hmm. the PCP podcast, PCP podcast 
is probably repetitive enough to us to get AI versions of ourselves. <laughs> and the people won't know the difference, so we can just rake in the cash by putting our AIs up to battle week after week. I, I have no doubt there is a formula, there's an algorithm we could assemble. You know, you start off the podcast, you got like, uh, you know, like you, you, get a, you get a percentage chance of like 90% I do an intro, then there's like a 10% chance is one of the other random people who'll do it. Mm -hmm. Then after that, you've got like Urban Dictionary, like literally just have a bot read the definition mm -hmm. from UrbanDictionary.com and then you just move on, you just, you go to Wikipedia, you look up the entries there and you just make a random, you, you select random words from that page and you insert them into a thing. You have it cut from person to person every like 20 seconds or something, maybe less than that. And then at one point you have a giant section of weird utilitarianism just stuck in there. <laughs> you just insert that awkwardly and arbitrarily and then you just go to the questions. Uh, it's, it's, it's baby shit. We gotta get we gotta get people on this. We we gotta we gotta <laughs> call them up. We gotta call them up. We need we this needs to be real. Bonus episode. The, come up on the next bonus episode. The PCP AI episode. Oh, that'd be a great idea. The next bonus is the bot episode. Okay, mm -hmm. we gotta get working on that. Yeah. Yeah. PBS. Please ID email me a Steve Jobs. Uh, <laughs> uh, Nate, it seems like you're pretty. What? You're, you're coming down hard mm. on the jobs are good and everyone and if you don't have a job, well then my like time to perish. Well, okay, listen, I, I'm just very hard on the personal responsibility front, you know? And, like, if you don't have a job, like, I, I get it. There are all these challenges that you face in our, you know, like, my, my generation is at all these issues. I was pretty lucky because right from the start, I was interested in technology and, like, computer science stuff. And now I'm a programmer, a professional programmer now. And, like, it's, it's a great place to be. That is, it's pretty much one of the best places to be to get a job. And I'm really, really sorry to everybody out there who has an intrinsic interest in, to use the old cliche, lesbian dance theory, or like just, what it doesn't matter, you know, art history, whatever it is. I'm really sorry mm. that no one wants to fucking hire your ass once you get a degree in that shit, but it, it, like, it's your life. It's your life to run, and the world doesn't give a shit if you get a job or not. Only you can carve out your place in the world so it's your responsibility. Once you're fucking 18, 17, 20, whatever it is, figure your shit out. Don't get into massive debt. Don't be stupid. Find a place where you can get a job or, I mean, or be an entrepreneur, you know? Go outside the system that's easier than ever now. It's just, I, I, I don't, whenever I hear people complain about the job market, I think, like, I, what, what, what I hear is, it sure is unfair that people will not give me shit. That's yeah. really upsetting to me. That's really yeah. upsetting to me. And right. I, again, I acknowledge all the challenges involved in this, but no one owes you anything, and nor will that attitude help you to get the things you want. I'm interested in helping people get what they want in life and be better people. And that means, you know, not just sitting around and wishing you had a job, but like literally going out. And, and like, if you go to school for five years and you get your art degree or whatever, and then you find yourself flipping burgers and like, cause that's the only job that's around. I get it. That's going to kill you. It's going to be crippling, but here's what you do. You don't cry about it on your fucking blog. You go and you, you, you assess your situation and you determine a path to get what you do want in life. You know, a better job, you know, whatever, whatever it is you want. You, you make a fucking strategy and it, it's just completely useless to sit around and complain about it. You can, you, if you're like interested in politics, you could perhaps address what you consider to be like issues. Like I, I'm not 100% on either side of like the minimum wage debate, but there is real stuff there. So I could understand someone like committing themselves to fighting on some side of that argument. Uh, but again, don't let politics distract you from the shit you should be doing to run your life better. That's the most important thing. We are all responsible for our own shit. So when it comes to jobs, you know, like my mentality is projected onto like, you know, if someone else has a job they could or could not offer you, you have to make them want to give it to you by providing value. That's, I, you know, that's a long Nate, sort of it. I gotta tell you, this is one of yeah. the only weird totalitarian rants that I 100% yeah. agree with and I don't have well, any problems. Well, there you go. With. Fantastic. I think Fantastic. we might be venturing into the realm of non-weird utilitarian. <laughs> I think this might be entering the realm of normal, <laughs> normal discussion. Yeah, that's, that seems pretty normal to me. Well, yeah. great. I, that's great. Okay, wait. Okay. 
Uh, my, I, my, 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 my mother obviously would mm-hmm. like me to go to college, and mm-hmm. and, uh, and and she is always like, you know, you're such a good artist. You you draw on the computer, <laughs> and I can't even believe it to me. I don't even get it. How can you do that? <laughs> uh-huh. You should go to art college. But I this, this kid, this kid's crap. able to go to Yahoo.com and make me an email account. <laughs> He's got computer skills. How does he do it? I just can't. We'll never I know. Want to give him a I job. can't even turn my computer on. I don't know what the fuck's going on. <laughs> but but if I if I were to go to college, I would mm-hmm. go like hard in to like mm-hmm. like like a STEM field, like like engineering. Like my go to is, is engineering. Yeah. And and, yeah. and and my mom's always like, well well why do you like you don't have an interest in engineering? You don't like engineering. Why why wouldn't you go into something that you like? Because well, I'm not fucking stupid is why. Because I'm not. I don't want to get a degree that won't help me get a job. If I'm going yeah. to invest in going to college, then my investment should be returned as fast and as quickly as I, possible. You know, I, I know yeah. we've said this a million times, but like, what is the point of college? What is the point of college? Nothing it is anymore. to eventually prepare you for a job. It is not adult baby camp. Uh, you know, where you can just go around <laughs> well, and fuck it, around. It is that, but that's not. That's well, it not shouldn't be. Ideal. It's not. It's not helpful that it is that. Yeah. We should strive against that. Yeah. I I, I recently found out. Like I, I didn't realize that this was a camp. thing. <laughs> uh, 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 about about courses like like that are just like you you can just like Sign buy a college up. course. <laughs> you can just buy a college course that like just is a course for like uh-huh. a semester. Like you could, like you can just do that. You can just oh, buy yeah. uh, I've done an that. art. Like, like, course, if you're like, oh, you know, I really want to be taught anatomy by, like, a teacher. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, like, uh, you can just buy a course for anatomy at an art school. Oh, well, dude, you know, I, I'm sure that's true, and I'm sure, like, some cla- some schools do this differently than others. I, 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 I've, like, literally, I've literally seen that, and I'm going to do that, so. Yeah, I, I, I mean, yeah. that, that's cool and all, and, like, if you think it's worth your money, and, like, it's something that you're really interested in, then, then great, you know, it's just, it's just I, you know, you shouldn't you expect. You, you, like, I, like, there, there's yeah. no reason you can't, like, go to, our, like, engineering school, make that sweet dosh, and then just put mm-hmm. in the fucking work when you're it's doing just, your sick ass engineering job and also do art. That's not you are not prohibited yeah, from that. You yeah. don't have an excuse. If you come home from work every day fucking tired and you're like, you know what, I have this passion for doing da da da. I you know I really want to draw or do whatever. Then you should try. Then you should do da 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 or whatever. I, just because you're I don't tired doesn't mean you if, can't. If you do don't it. like, if you don't do the thing that you want to do, then you gotta wonder like, how much how do much you, you really care? want it? Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't want to suck my own dick too hard here, but like you that's should, exactly you're what the best. I did. You're the best about this. Yeah. I mean that this is what I did. I you know I took the long you know I didn't do what Digi did. I respect Digi for what he did, but I took a much safer route with my career path, where I slowly but surely kept working on my college, kept doing my stuff, worked my shitty part time jobs, but the entire time I would do exactly that. Come home exhausted from like building furniture at Pier One, or you know stand on my feet doing just a bunch of stupid bullshit that everybody does. It was like a shitty job, and then I'd come home. It's like, okay, time to work for like five hours making a video now. I'm going to do that now because that's what I want to do. And like, if you don't do that, I question how committed yeah. you really are to, yeah. to this thing. Yeah. I, yeah. What, what I love about you, Nate, this is going to turn into Circle Jerk episode two. Yes, it, it, go. It, 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 is, is, is that you, like, like, like your base stats are like mm. fine, but your true talent, your, your, your talent is that you just will go forever and never stop. You just like you will just never cease your 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 tiring advance, no matter how like like it hurts your body or soul. You will that just never give up. That that's your one that's your one true like like special unique ability. And you know, again, I don't want to suck my dick either here, but it's yeah, really can. nice that like other people have started to kind of emulate that with that like a bunch of people have done like their own Weaguas now. Or mm-hmm. not Weagua, but but their own Mia Mafavas. Like like I I just copied guys like Digi and other people who have done like a month of solid content. But it's the branding, man. It's that Huey's Law that makes people see like, wow, this guy really sells me on how cool it is to work hard on stuff. And then other people do, and it's like and then ev- everyone is glad they did it. They feel better they feel like heroes ask them all ask ask math ask man mode ask any of those other fucking guys who did it uh 
you will be a better person th- if th- you just ties hold yourself to a standard. Into the legendary Munchie hmm. W Tiny Hats vlog, watery advice. <laughs> th- 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 this was a vlog I recorded at Radcon Three, where I took a shower after like twenty minutes of debating if I want to take a shower because you know, like, oh, you know, I I I, I want to just go downstairs and just hang out. You know, I don't know if I really want to put in the effort to take a shower. It's too yeah. much. But then mm-hmm. I fucking did it. I forced myself to, and it was great. Immediately the water hits me, and I. Feel feel like a new fucking man and i and 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 this is the same thing that goes as i say in the video for like working out or you know like 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 exercising anyway taking a shower doing Mm -hmm. the the normal people stuff you might not want to put in the effort into doing work but once you do it'll feel so good it's just like it's just it's always like that just is always like that you have in every way in every way it'll feel good it'll be good when you do it and you'll get the experience and and obviously test if you don't, and if you don't, you will feel bad you didn't do the thing you know you need to do. So you're even yeah. preventing yourself from feeling bad, and that all becomes a good thing that you feel about yourself. That's how like I feel when I work out or when I come home mm-hmm. to work or any of that shit. This, ben, this what are you work- saying? Oh, oh, go I, oh I was sorry. Gonna, I was gonna say, yeah, you've gotta you've gotta step outside yourself and be mm-hmm. like, I am you know, I feel averse to doing this thing that is good for me, but you know, I know that even though it doesn't feel like it now, objectively I know that I will feel good once I do it. And you have to like, you have to like kind of go on faith. You have to kind of operate on faith that that is what will happen. That you will yeah. be glad you did it. Well, you know, this you is the thing is, the thing is, it's not the, the, the it's the problem is that everyone is like, oh, what's the point of life to be happy? And that's not the truth. That's wrong. That's false. Mm-hmm. The real <laughs> pe- meaning of life is to find something that gives you meaning. You have to do something that f- makes you feel fulfilled. And fulfillment mm-hmm. is totally different than happiness. Happiness is eating an entire pizza. Fulfillment is like doing something <laughs> that like 10 years from now you'll look back and think that was fucking amazing. So you need I, to- I agree. I, I, yeah. I, I think most people Delaying might Delaying gratification. That is, that Delaying is gratification is the most important skill anyone can have Look, in this life. Look, it's called life, life edging, all right? Get into it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, that's, that's it, man. That's exactly it. Like, uh, I don't know. Like, I remember so well that full year. It took me one year to make both of my Gurren Lagann videos. And I remember coming home after my fucking shitty job building furniture, and I would, I would grab my fucking laptop, get in my car, drive to, that my parents had like loaned me, it wasn't actually my car, and that I'd drive to the fucking library so I'd have privacy and be able to focus, and sit there on my terrible fucking laptop that couldn't even play a preview image, so I had to render out footage and then play it back if I wanted to see if the edit had worked properly, and just do that, it t- and again, you know, six months, just like month after month after month working on the shit, coming home, recording whatever I need to do, it's... Uh, I don't, I'm not interested in like making myself sound cool. What I'm interested in having people understand why this is important and why it matters that this is how you orient your life. You gotta know that the best things in life take work and you should not sit around and be like, why aren't people giving me shit? I, I care about you, everybody listening to this. I want you to have the best life possible. And the way you can do that is by empowering yourself and taking responsibility for your life. I just want everyone to be happy, goddammit, and this is how you do it. Nate, you're literally Caliborn. You literally are <laughs> Caliborn. In, what an in honor. every way. In every way. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're not wrong. a big like, disappointment. Like, 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 <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 you're playing a game that's supposed to be unwinnable to play, and you're just yeah. fucking cranking shit out, and you're abusing women every step of the way, <laughs> and getting your shit done to its fullest extent. And they will know green. the taste of my lash. The, the PCP, the PCP are, is just the felt that, that Nate has amassed yeah. over his, his years of grinding out this, this fucking shit. As I conquer planet to planet on yeah. my descent into that black hole in the sky yeah uh sick god x was so good remember that oh, part? it was really good it was x- really good mm, hey yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> well Andy. okay hey okay. hey this is all cool and all i feel like we've gone through a little bit of the philosophy believe it or not i don't want to like whenever we talk too much about how cool i am i don't want to do it for that long mm-hmm. i would rather hear about some specific stories of jobs that we've each had mm-hmm. that that are there that i don't M- know, you know I've, I've had a lot in my life uh, th- this is know? the this is the nate redemption episode where i where i take back <laughs> everything that i felt for the past like three uh, years and and, and and nate comes around to be like a normal he'd be like you know guys let's not get too to the philosophy you know let's try and transfer into some like you know s- you know standard <laughs> stories here and get get, well, get back to the roots here. ever ever since radcon i've just had you know two phrases ringing in my in my mind the whole time it's where are the memes and give me the memes <laughs> And by Christ, I know that's what the people crave. So that's what we got to do. 
Uh, well, hey, all right, all right. Uh, you you've been yeah. talking, so you're bar you're barred yeah. from entry to talk about Fair. stories now. Tom, you haven't said anything basically this entire podcast. Um, yeah, <laughs> and you're basically not worthy of existence. What what, what else okay. is new? Um, no, uh, fuck. I mean, I I agree with everything that's been said so far. Is that like, yeah, you got to like fucking make your shit happen, and and that's just the, you got to grind if you want. Where to are the memes? Give me the stories. <laughs> Give us the memes. Well, Muchi, you you were horrified at my story. I told you about how I've, my job got fucked over out of college. You thought oh, that was, yeah. oh, oh that yeah. What's that one? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I I I, the reason like my whole life went to shit is because I had mm. I had everything set up and lined up after school, and then it all was cruelly robbed from me at the last second mm. for mm. no fault of my own. Uh, so when That's I what they all say. What? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just gonna like turn this all around and take all responsibility off of my shoulders. <laughs> yeah. um, well, <laughs> but no. Uh, so when I was going to school, like during the summer and the winter, I would work uh, doing like I sort of an internship. It was like a a, a college program mm-hmm. at where my dad works. He works uh, as a contractor at Hanscom Air Force Base. So he's like mm-hmm. uh, he does like businessy sort of things. He balances like bajillion dollar budgets and stuff. He's a smart guy. Um, cool. And so he's like, hey, you're poor as fuck. Come work here at this program thing. If they accept you, you can go do that. I'm like, okay. So I just started going there just like doing uh, like paperwork and filing things away. And then I got an email and they were like, hey, oh yeah, um, we need this thing designed. Does anybody know how to do art things? And I'm just like, hey, 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 this is what I've been <laughs> waiting for. <laughs> So I designed them this this whole like thing just in my spare time and like it wasn't open for like people in my position but I'm just like I'll just do it anyway because I have a bunch of downtime mm-hmm. in the middle of like the things they're giving me to do so I did it and they're like whoa this is fucking great we're gonna use it so like it's all over the place at the base now and stuff I guess and they still use it mm-hmm. and I was like oh that's sick and they're like you need to come back again and do like design work for us this time I'm like all right sure, sick sure and then I started doing that. And then they were like, uh, yeah, you're great. We like you a lot. We're going to we're gonna hire you doing design here at the design team uh, once you're done with school in, like, six months at this point. I'm like, yes, I'm fucking sick. Mm-hmm. This is great. I'm going to get, like, a big, cushy, paid job right out of the gate. It's going to be great. And then fucking Obama cut the funds, <laughs> and they killed my fucking position literally two oh. weeks before I was set to graduate. So then I graduated. I'm like, well, I have no backup plan because I've literally been working where I was supposed to get hired in two weeks. And, uh... They, they 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 fucked me and then i was a sad boy forever. winner of the nobel peace prize barack hussein obama where's tom's <laughs> peace obama where is tom, it i put Wait, in the hours i put for? in the effort what what was the thing oh. you worked for uh i just worked for a, it's a hanscom air force base it's a acquisitions oh. base yeah, yeah. <laughs> any any are you commenting there Devu? anything to say on the matter well military spending still increased every year yeah, well, not for me. I know, right? Yeah, I guess it was... Bullshit. Uh, they can spend a uh, trillion dollars on, like, the F-35, but they can't yeah. throw me, like, 30 grand a year, those fucks. N- mm-hmm. Now now I understand why Tom is a communist. It's it, it, it's it's not to rebel <laughs> against the system itself. It's to spite Obama himself. It, it's to get back the ultimate at, at the man. Capitalist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tom is looking at Obama up on Capitol Hill with his with his fucking fist clutch. I was ready, ready and to, to make the mad run right up there. and bushy tailed. Yeah. I remember going into college and I was like, Dad, uh, I know this is like expensive, right? Like how much is it going to cost me per month when I graduate? And straight up yeah. it was just like everybody has debt. Don't worry about it. And I was like, okay, okay I, I, dad, I, I'll I, believe you. I don't you. mean this to be mean or anything, but your father failed you in this one small <laughs> thing. He he, he no, and small, by small small thing. Well, okay, I, that that's true. It's a, like like I'm not trying to say the guy's evil or anything, but like uh, so much of the generation above us has underestimated and, and wasn't fully abreast of the situation that we found ourselves in. And it is it is fair to criticize. It's fair to criticize for that. You because know? It, it, was, uh, it was a different school. system when they grew up. Out of it, school. It was a different I mean, system yeah, when, they, yeah. when they did things. I, I, I out really of school, feel... my, my bills were $500 a month in student loans. And like if, yeah. I, if, they, if he had mm-hmm. said, son, you're going to have to pay $500 a month, 
I'd have been like, well, I'm not going to school then. It's just, he probably didn't actually know, because none of our parents, like, grew up in the same ec- economy that we're in right now. Yeah. And nowhere, like, the, the, the if you look at the charts about how, uh, I, I'm sure you have, but, like, the, the charts of the increases in enrollment costs of colleges and, you know, housing and boarding and all the stuff that people used to, like, do themselves, but now, because it's all rolled into the, you can just, you can just fucking take a big out federal loan and just push all, delay the fucking, you know, right, it's delay the, the pain, as opposed to delaying the growth, which, oh, the, 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 which causes the cost yeah. to constantly increase for future generations yeah. yeah and i'll tell you i'll tell you why this, is a, this isn't really a conspiracy because it's just true yeah but it's the fact that we do this it's the fact that we just have this magic wand we can wave and say i get into college now all my problems get delayed for four or eight years the fact that that exists is why it's so easy for the for the uh the colleges to just keep blowing up their fucking prices that they charge for enrollment and shit and the government just like magically creates more money like yeah. okay sure we'll just give you That's more money more it's a huge fucking evil as, uh, cycle and we all get ground up in it it's more or less the same thing as what happens to uh healthcare prices and housing prices sounds right to me i don't trust big corporations on any of this shit i trust big corporations to make my shoes and make my iphones and stuff i don't protect them to protect my fucking data or anything but uh that's why i would much rather any fucking time like just just like deal with individual people and have like a small little business that I run one on one as opposed to these giant corporations that literally are more powerful than the governments that like that theoretically control them but actually they have massive sway over through fucking funding them politically through super PACs and all this bullshit what, oh, what it's are a mad we world. to do what are we to do is there anything that we could do about the system like 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 what like how can we change the system is there any way to do that or is it the, so like off the rails now that there's no point in even like acknowledging that there's a problem i really think the I only think thing the, to do the solution, is stop relying on the, the government the solution is clearly to seize the means of mm. production Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it sort of is, only in the sense of by seizing it, we stop relying on the government to do shit for us because it allows them to do this stuff. Listen, guys, I'm not, I'm no fucking hardcore, like, all government is inherently bad or any of that shit, but I'm telling you right now, like, who the fuck wants your government to control, like, every aspect of your life? Do you trust these fucking bureaucrats to control every minute detail? They've got... 300 million don't, people to control. Don't be a, digi, don't be a digi bro and let the Sybil system come to pass. You gotta you got oh. got be more woke than that. I, 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 I'm with you, Nate, and I am on your side, but I want to play devil's advocate because there are yeah. people who, who are who are in dirt poor, like like white trash, like trailer parks, and they, hey. are, just, they are just in the cycle <laughs> where everyone <laughs> I around dare you them. talk about Tom. <laughs> 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 They're in the cycle where, like, their dad relied on the government, and his dad relied on the government, and and now oh, yeah, like yeah, like yeah. they are just so entrenched in that culture. Like 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 what can mm-hmm. they do to mm-hmm. break through? Because it's not like they have any money well, listen, to begin with. It's to- you're, that's a totally fair point, but here's the real deal. Fuck them. <laughs> Fuck them. That's that's my answer to this question. At some point, someone's got to pay. And it's gonna be these people. Oh, I'm think, really um, sorry. I'm really sorry. Wait, wait, be... I wish it wouldn't happen. Wait, but wait, they have to pay em. for what? Well, th- they when, when we uh, like just for example, they were one bored. crazy example. If if we just for example cut welfare 100 percent, let's just say it was gone. Because let's just say America had a revolution where everyone realized that like taxation is theft just across the board. Let's just say that mm-hmm. happened. Yeah. Then like then man, that sucks for all the people who really relied on welfare to live and shit. That's like and that's gonna cause huge problems. Like all those people will probably not be able to pay their fucking rent, get kicked out, yeah. with a massive homeless population. You know, the the, the housing market will crash because people can't afford the things that were being subsidized by the government don't get me wrong there's gonna be huge problems but long term long term uh i I like to think things would go better you know if there was less reliance and less government control and all this shit but i'm not fucking economist the solution is something even more socialist but is secretly better for economics Mm. is it which is is bring back obama (laughs) is it the universal universal guaranteed income? income yeah it's yeah. Because, uh, okay. That, that's not a bad. That's not a bad plan. Well, yeah. Because the thing is, that's the about, opposite of what you just proposed, Nate. I, I, know. I know, but like Devu said, it's technically more socialist, but it gets us more towards an egalitarian system, right? Which, because it's you know the thing about welfare. Does it though? Does it? And well, social security. Well, here's here's my my, my... wait 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 wait. Let let, let oh, Devu finish. Okay. Let okay, finish. Go. Yeah. The thing about all the government spending shit, and and let's, mm-hmm. uh, let's just go on the record here. The government spends way the fuck more money on entitlements than it does on the military. People it don't, does spend more. That's true. Yeah, that's no, true. like significantly fucking more. You could kill the I entire it was military. Like two thirds is like entitlements. And then one uh, third like is military. Half. Like you could actually uh, okay. like the military okay. is like a quarter, 
and mm-hmm. entitlements is like half of all the money the government spends. And let's not let's not be you know inc- like that's a lot of money on both fronts. Like, I know, I know, no, no. It just states, it just course, pisses but. me off because people always count mm-hmm. social security, welfare, blah blah blah, all as separate slices of the pie. Right. Um, right. But they don't separate the fucking navy from the fucking you know air force. Anyway, irrelevant. Mm-hmm. So the thing is that the government gets to decide how you use your money, what you can spend your money on. It gives you all these rules. Mm-hmm. The idea of UBI is simply that everyone everyone gets a certain amount of money, the same amount of money, in their bank account attached to their social securities every month, and that's it. It doesn't matter how much or how little money you make. That way you don't have to worry about losing money by making more money in the form of different tax brackets, for instance, right? You'd make well, the same money yeah. every single month. So, well, Tavu, here is why. Here is why uh, that plan is evil, and I'm coming to your house to kill you. Uh, it's because... That system is prejudiced against the less competent. That's the problem with that system. And we, how can we discriminate against people on the basis of competency? Yeah. How can you make that case? Didn't that you just evil? make the case that we need to fuck those people and let them die completely? I am, I mean, he, I'm, he's, I'm being, he's making I'm being a, a joke. joke. He's oh, trying, where are the memes? Did, Give did you like me that joke? Did, did you like that joke? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it was fucking gay. The memes. Um, but, the dude, memes. but dude, no, like, yeah. the idea of UBI is that mm-hmm. you don't have any excuses. There's there's nothing in UBI that incentivizes you to work less, you know? I, I, think I, a lot, I love it, I, I think frankly, plenty of people it. know, like, have some, you know, Republican uncle who, like, is still on disability and totally could fucking work but doesn't. I have one, you know? So mm-hmm. it's just like, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, people, you know, laissez-faire economics people, they talk about how when you have the government spend money on shit... Not only does it cost a lot of money, it also re- results in all this fucking red tape, and it makes mm-hmm. the law too complicated. And, I mean, complicated laws in general are the secret way in which the poor get fucked over, because we have a lawyer society where basically the better lawyers you have, the more you can get away with shit, and vice That's versa. No true. one ever talks about that shit. No one ever talks about simplifying the law. That would help out a lot of it's people. It's because who's going to fucking report on that? Fucking Rachel Maddow, who's right. like one of the elite class, you know? Right, of course exactly. Not, of course not, you know? Um, so simplified law... The thing is that you can't politically get away with, like, having less fucking entitlements. Like, people don't really talk about this, but Republicans almost never even propose that shit. It's mostly, like, libertarian think tanks talking about, like, yeah. cutting funding for shit. Like, no one even suggests it, actually. No one even suggests it because it's too I'm suggesting it right fucking now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing it. So my point is, with UBI, <laughs> you sort of cheat the system because everyone basically gets what they want regarding helping out the poor, right? But without all the red tape. And I think that's probably the best compromise that you can come to. But even fucking the socialist paradises like Sweden can't make that shit happen because obviously the government wants all that control. That's why they, they that's why they use the whole uh, <clears throat> veneer of generosity with other people's tax money in order you know, to get by with that shit. But yeah, UBI, that's the closest I think we can get in this generation. Hmm. Well, that system is so attractive to me in many ways but, and everyone's gonna th- oh, Tom if you want to cut in yeah feel well free I was gonna her. say like like just yeah. to play devil's advocate on it is that mm. I, I think personally I would love that I think it's a great idea my only concern mm-hmm. with a system like that is like we just talked about how like government uh, uh, intrusion into things like the healthcare market and and yeah. college drove the prices up. Like, wouldn't the market yeah. eventually adjust the fact that oh, everyone has X amount of money, so we can price everything up slowly but steadily yeah. until it just doesn't matter I anymore? Oh, I don't actually right. understand economics, so I don't know exactly. I how got the, it. Price delicate. controls. That's always worked out. <laughs> oh, I found the solution. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm gonna sound. Uh, Muncha, yeah, no, if you no, want to no, say no. You, you, you go. On. I'm gonna, sh- I'm gonna shift gears. Okay, I might go on a little bit l- long, sure, but it's sure, just, sure. it's just. So, uh, I there's just a story that I want to tell about me as a young man that might make people think I was always evil. But <laughs> here's, <laughs> just you don't need any help with that, Nate. That's that's not a thing that we will now here's, think. Here's how you know that I'm not pretending anything that I say now. It's because when I was a kid, uh, I my mom is a special education teacher. And so when I was in I was in school and like I was doing well and I felt, you know, whatever, things were going fine. I was in like elementary school at this point. And uh, my mom was telling me about like, you know, her day, you know, she she worked with like a kid one on one. You know, she uh, you know, she spends her days kind of like just with one kid, at least, you know, with this particular job she was in at the school that she worked at. And I, w- I just said to my mom, um, OK, mom, yeah, I-, I get it. But like, here's my question. Like, why are you paying so much attention to this kid who will never be, you know, 
an amazing shining star. Why not like spend your time to like help a kid who's like really good and you know like could be even better with with one on one attention. And she was you know she's just like well you know like he doesn't need it as much like it's uh, I gotta I gotta help the people who who are are lacking and need more of a boost to get up to to help them. And that has always confused me i've never been on board with that system yeah um like what you know what is gained like what we feel good we like, feel like, good yeah like like what, what is gained helping someone who is never gonna make significant progress um well mm. i guess if you want to talk purely in like good. You, the t- well, no like i think there's a utilitarian fact of that like you know the mm-hmm. pe- the low achievers like they form like kind of like the backbone of like the service industry and stuff like, you know, there are people who um, can't really climb any higher. So they, well, there well, needs to be, like, a li- minimum level of competency in, like, any sort of employed positions. So, you, like, you're not wrong, Tom. It's it's just I'm talking about, like, people who are, like, not even capable of speech, for example, as, like, some of these students. Mm. You know, so there's – I like, we got we got issues if we I think, got, you I think know. you're severely alienating most of our audience right now. <laughs> <laughs> and, again, I mean, I'm not say, trying to say, like, really people who are like, more lower functioning don't deserve care or attention yeah. or – appreciation it's just it's a matter of distribution of resources is what i am focusing on and i'm interested and and let's like let's be real if we invented robot butlers that could like one-on-one tend to like all the people who needed this kind of extra care and i'll tell you right now the way that we get there is by helping people be really smart science boys who are at the top level of achievement so that we can invent that and like right now like isn't it great that like when let's this is just one example but like you got a girl who's like got some disability she's she gets lost or something she pulls out what her fucking cell phone that she couldn't have made that was made by a really smart science boy that science fucking developed and she calls home so she, someone can come pick her up so she's not you know scared or danger in danger or any of that shit like that uh, to me it makes all the sense in the world to focus our resources on the high achievement oh god <coughs> on the high achievement that's uh let, that's all i'm saying let it be and known as a that baby I... I detected that as a baby i detected that shit yeah let, let it be known that i've hit the eject button on on this train oh, that we've all been fuck. steaming powering down and i, and I am now outside i of, just want to gas wagon. the retarded munchie that's all i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> I I think I think the reason you do that is everyone. exactly what your mom has said. <laughs> that, that 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 I don't I don't think this is necessarily true. Like like at like objective fact that this well, is what should happen. Uh, again, but but the not... people want to the, the reason people want to do that is because uh-huh. they feel like the like the people who are well off are well off and they want to help the people who are not. Whether that's morally objectionable or not, I'm not here to discuss. Well, like, a lot of but people, have but an people instinct. want to do it. People want to help. But see, I think this is people. a major issue of human nature itself. Like we see people who are rich and I, I see it every fucking day. We like I did it today. Uh me and my girlfriend were talking about I I, I forget who. Let's just say like Nicki Minaj and it was like Nicki Minaj like tweeted something about like being unhappy and like my response was okay but you're rich so fuck you that's <laughs> yeah. wrong that's incorrect that does not in- just because someone is rich or successful does not invalidate you know like yeah uh, they're, they're I, I don't this I wonder, I don't well, there's, a, there's a connection here there's a connection here the rich or, well, well, I, I, I make the connection rich. to those with versus those that we have such strong instincts to just want to help those without. And it, pr- pr- on a practical matter, it is not always beneficial. And this is why people love communism and socialism to begin with. They love the idea of just giving stuff to people who are without, but that might not necessarily be the best way to help those people. Yeah, that's the point I'm trying to make. It's not just something you can give. You know, when people mm-hmm. talk about like, oh, let's fucking, you know, let's let's bridge that fucking wage gap. You know, by giving some money over to those other people, mm-hmm. ask yourself why the hell does handing and throwing a shitload of money at Africa not necessarily fix it, right? There's more sure, than just. Sure. I think okay. Let me put it this way: when it comes to institutionalized uh, those in power versus those in not, those mm-hmm. who are not in power, uh, incomes, wealth is actually kind of a distraction. It doesn't actually have all to do with why certain people remain successful and others don't. Uh, when we just look at the wealth gap or the income gap and we're like, oh, if we could just fix that, we fix the actual underlying reason why these people are making different amounts of money, it doesn't mm-hmm. make any sense. Like if we make it to where it's illegal to pay a CEO more than, say, $250,000 a, a year, all they're going to do, companies will just give CEOs a shitload of free stuff to incentivize them. Because there's a reason why CEOs sure. get paid so they'll work so around much. it. 
That actually, yeah. and um, then we just get in the semantics game of like uh, of like trying to criminalize each of these little things, and that's a huge waste of time. Right. I, I, uh, I, I, okay, I think we're conflating mm-hmm. certain subjects because I'm I not talking about like are. like the rich or people who are like just don't have the backbone in order to get a job. Okay. okay. I'm talking about like 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 mentally like 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 birth defect people. I'm talking about birth Sh- sure, defect okay. people who I feel like are going like 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 their existence is suffering. And, and, and that, I that's feel not like... necessarily true. I mean, it depends. It yeah. depends on what you mean. Well, they might be I'm... content. Well, like, there's well, a lot of people who are retarded who are just perfectly happy. It's just that they're yeah. not, you know, gonna fucking make Apple II or whatever. They're just. I, I know. I, I know. Okay. What I'm saying is, is yeah, that we're, I, we're, I, we're, I'm not saying that you should. We should just like have all of our teachers the focus on, on the people who are just like underachievers, who are just able body and fine, mm-hmm. and you know, mm-hmm. you know, can do whatever. They just don't have, you know, the the fortitude and willpower to do it. Those well, people can fucking die, and they don't matter. At I, some I, point, sure. somebody has to start looking out for those people because if we say, if Nate, yeah. if we do what you say, and we're like, we should just focus on all of the successful like people people are going far so they can create things to, to make the robot butlers or whatever they have to care about those people to want to make the robot butlers if they don't well, I, uh, then they'll yeah. never get made well, and they'll just all I, die the, the so, way like, I, I see it, it there should be like there should be like a a skill floor that we should be trying to elevate everyone to and then once they are at that floor we should leave them alone until, well, it depends like, on in what way but yes well, i mean that's I, the I'm general that the we should idea. try and elevate the people who need our help on like a physical or like mental level maybe not like like i don't know how much money we are dedicating to this in our society i don't know like what our priorities are but i think that it's just a humanitarian and just like not entirely a against our interests or like burning money or anything i think it, it, it's it's just a nice thing to do in order to help like our, our well, general society you are you are not more wrong on like on level with one another and be See, able to the achieve thing. the same things as one another you're not wrong and i would never say anyone who wants to do that shouldn't do it like for example like my mom chose to go into the special education field she knew exactly what she was getting into and of course i salute her and i'm proud of her and i love her and that's you know like of course i respect her decisions of course i like it, it the problem is when you conflate or not not conflate but like you're mix we're mixing between like individual specific choices people make and then just like broad policy issues like when you when you get between like if you say like um, you know, I don't believe in uh, uh, that men are biologically equal to women in every single way. Like, there's a, uh, but it's, and people are like, but I know women who are stronger than men. I mean, of course, like that's true, and it happens plenty of times. It's just, you know, uh, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm getting lost in the woods here. A uh, bunchy. We're, we're invading different topics here. It, 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 it's, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, I want to talk about something. I want to shift gears to something that we were okay. kind of talking before. The vu remind me of about simplifying the law. I hmm. think. One of, like, the major problems in the United States government is that it's so fucking old, and all the people in it are so fucking old. Mm. Mm. It's, it, it's very, that, very true. The, the, the government, like, like the way <clears throat> I... That's why I'm voting I, for Bernie Sanders. He's exactly. He's going to revolutionize all The, the, the all youngest shit. person, the hippest <laughs> guy in the crowd. <laughs> I'm he, voting Bernie in 2020. I don't know about Bernie's you guys. Bernie's a good man. Yeah, yeah, uh, when he's six feet fucking probably. under, we're going to lift him up to I'll the... Uh, you, why the, the fuck not? <laughs> at, at this point... <laughs> I mean, yeah. he's what? He's like 74 now? Something like that? You know? Oh, wait, he's wait, already dead. No, no. All we got to do, we just got a weekend at Bernie's, Sanders him. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, the entire fucking presidency. He's the entire, the entire the 2016 election was just a build up to that punchline. <laughs> hey, remember everybody out there, when they start telling you to vote for again? Joe Biden instead of Bernie Sanders, remember, Joe Biden is 75. Bernie Jesus Sanders is 76. Not, uh, wait, not a big difference why does Bernie Sanders look so fucking old then? He just looks like ancient. an old ass man. He just lo- well, but Joe Biden is one year younger. He just happens to look more photogenic and stuff. Okay, okay, well, it fucking doesn't matter. I'm when an old ass Jew, Bernie Sanders. Oh, I'm the, from the way Brooklyn, I see the government. It is like a like a bunch of bricks, like like mm-hmm. tacked on top of one another. Who like 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 each layer of bricks is from like a different time period and like looks like completely aesthetically different to the bricks before. But they're all laid upon the sound the same foundation. So when yeah, you step back yeah. and look at it, it's just like a hodgepodge of different Munchie, ideas. I and hear you, dude. Tear before. up the Constitution. We've yeah, got to start destroy, it. dude. We, <laughs> we got to start with the, the the service agreement to Minecraft is the template we should be using. All right. R- rule number one: all people were created work equal. Rule number two: do not mine at night. This is prohibited <laughs> in the United States of America. 
<laughs> okay, so like, bro, see, the thing about like yes. society, and I assume basically every culture, but America is mm-hmm. definitely no different, is that the average person really views the government as like a magic MacGuffin in like a movie yeah. where it's like whoever yeah. can grab the magic lamp and then like w- rub their wish into it in the third act like everything will be fine like at the end of fucking return of the king where like you know the ground collapses and conveniently only collapses the bad people you know mm-hmm. but that's what we always want that's how it's always talked about uh like i remember like when obamacare was like very slightly approved of by the supreme court people were like okay cool health care is free right now right <laughs> like yeah or like yeah. when conversely if obamacare gets obstructed by like one month people are like oh good healthcare is improved and capitalist now right fucking no i think you know Tavu, because- you're totally right like re- remember that argument i made a long time ago about like um uh shit what was it it was like uh that we should like we, 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 with the, on the suicide episode when i said like i want like people to like review people and like approve people before committing suicide you like th- like it, it, to institute that, I recognize takes like a magical level of like bureaucracy yeah. that does not exist and can't be relied upon. But like, <laughs> if it existed and worked perfectly as right. I envision it, that would be nice. Right. But it's not real. And so. I think that this mentality comes from sort of childhood, where you see police mm-hmm. officers as just like objective enforcers of the law, which is this objective power. Or like, you know, you go to yeah. school and like the school is this objective force of knowledge, and teachers just know things, right? So. Mm-hmm. I think that if we saw um, not having laws as a, uh, not necessarily a problem, but possibly a solution, if we always just think of the way to solve problems as more laws, why can't it ever You know what the be... problem is here? What? The problem is we got all these goddamn gamer girls who think of the goddamn <laughs> American government as like the, the, it's like the code base that was made by the creators of, of their favorite game, Minecraft, uh, you know, Notch. <laughs> they think that like, of course it was crafted perfectly to be the most impartial. You know what it's like? There's this one scene in iShield 21. Okay, this is a, this is a great example. <laughs> oh, in God. iShield 21, there is an exa- there, there is a moment. The, oh, it, it's a football manga. It's one of my favorites. It's a sports manga. The only time, okay, so th- whatever. Like in real, like we, these days, football is called ref ball in the United States of America because the refs like interfere with like every fucking play and throw a million flags and like control the whole game because of like safety and other shit. In I Shield 21, every, like the whole game is played, the whole manga is laid out that people just like do things and then like a touchdown happened, yay! And like everyone understands it immediately. There's never any question. There was only one moment in the manga where the issue of the refs is addressed. And it's this one moment where, like, the character looks like he was at, like he was out of bounds, but he had actually like, grabbed some dirt to be in bounds or something like that. And like, there's a dramatic reveal as he like looks into the eyes of the ref, and the ref, like stone faced and perfect, perfectly mechanical and robotic, looks back into the eyes of Monta, the guy who had made the play. All right, he was like trying to like, get get out of bounds or whatever to stop the clock. And like, it's just they do zooms on face to face to face, and the ref raises his hand and, in perfect recognition of all the facts, says yes. It was out of bounds. You are safe to do another play. You can still win this game, my heroes. And then he uh, and people, people think Roe of the government like Wade. that. Like, perfect. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they think of the government as, like, perfect and impartial uh, right. and always but, has your best But at best the same time, they are constantly complaining about how bad the government is. Right, yeah. Well, that's that's dude, true. Dude, no, like, that's I remember, true. okay, in 2012 or 2011, it was the 112th Congress or whatever the fuck. It was the one where... Uh, the Democrats and Republicans were like half and half, so like nothing was getting done. It was obstructionist central, north and mm-hmm. south walking Zach fucktopia. And one of the, <laughs> I would just read articles of like the, the top 10 reasons why this Congress is the worst Congress ever. And <laughs> one of the reasons that they brought up was this Congress has passed the fewest laws of any Congress in like 80 years or something. And I'm like, hmm. you know, I hear people talk, um, about you know deregulation like it's really cool but then other people are like oh well, deregulation sounds scary uh, we don't want see corporations to do whatever um but like why not just actually look at the regulations and look at this on a case-by-case basis and consider which ones are reasonable i actually for unrelated reasons happened to check december 20 uh december 2017 the u.s government had sixty one thousand nine hundred and fifty pages of regulations, Damn. the federal government, which apparently is a 25-year low because of the Trump administration's <laughs> uh, net negative on on regulations. But yeah, 61,000 pages. Like, 
Have, have you seen the shit they do where, like, uh, uh, they'll get, like, a new law and that they're voting on in, like, an hour and, like, all the senators get a copy of it, like, one hour before and it's, like, literally 2,000 pages long? Yeah. Like, that happens every fucking day. That shit's happening. It's a world... I mean, I remember some people... I've heard people who've said that they've heard people who've said that every U.S. citizen <laughs> breaks three felonies a year. And Damn. that there you go. We live in a world where it's really just all about selective enforcement. Lawyers are really the ones yep. who control yep. the control freedom in the society. So there you go. You know, you know oh, okay. what really sucks? What like really fucking sucks? Working a job. Let's talk about how fucking gay it is to have a job. Let's Ooh, talk about how gay it is really to, to, fu- to, to fucking. About. We should have an entire on. episode about that. I've, I've, I've woken up. I've woken up from my stupor. Um, Dude, I have. I have. I have. I have a big. I have a big news for everyone that I'm. Oh, I, I, I already know this. Uh-huh. Yeah, I got. A, I got a fucking job. All right. Oh yeah, no! Imagine it. I know. I know. <laughs> What a what a nightmare! Oh, the He's neat betrayed life us all. is over. Well, uh, do you, not, do you want to talk really about what neat. it is? The neat life continues because oh, okay. it's a it's a it's a work from home thing. I'm basically just answering calls, and the okay. reason why I did it, okay, like I used to I used to do online tutoring, and I would just mm-hmm. kind of be hanging out on this tutoring website waiting for like notifications come up that people needed help with like math problems and then i would go and like walk them through a math problem and i would just have that open while i was like working on stuff and also so physics, i would kind of right? split my attention between doing my art and doing my job so I'm, i got this job in the hopes that i can kind of do that and just be like drawing while i'm waiting for calls and then take a call and do a whole thing and then and then sure. you know go back to doing my shit in the hopes that it'll like you know like that I can have money, but also be working at the same time. But time will tell. Time will tell if that uh, if that pans out. Yeah, Ben, I'm really asking yet? you about physics. Like, why nothing can go faster than light? And like, your answer sounded like a <laughs> shitty sci-fi novel. Wait, are you when? I it was like last year or something. We just were, because we real were, because just real a cap physics in real life, is right. Yeah. Bizarre. Real physics is a shitty sci-fi novel. It doesn't I know, make sense. right? Isn't that fucking weird? <laughs> ben, that's God, how, man. There he is. How there he is, right there, my dude. Your production of the only thing that really matters: endless war. Beast capades. No, endless war. Endless oh, right. war. Um, I was in training this past week, and in training, I was like tuning out and just like and just like trying my best to like throw together some shitty some shitty makeshift code out of cracks like source code. Mm-hmm. Uh, um. Endless War will continue forever. Endless War okay, is excellent. the new hotness. What is this? An episode of the Rowdy Fuckers Cop Killers? Get the fuck out <laughs> God, of here, guys. The people Shut wish. Up. The people wish, Nate. The people they will, wish. I have banned Rowdy Fuckers flow. Cop Killers. The slime will flow forever. I have today <laughs> achieved the dream, the impossible oh. dream. I now command two Mega Slime. Whoa! Compared to your pitiful one, Munchie. Hey, 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 hey! The the rowdies will fucking rise. We were catching up to you right and quick, and this and that and that was like yeah, right. not that, that was only like three people. Those were only three trained assassins that I had to destroy your pitiful kill army. They have no resolve. Once I put my immense wit and intellect onto the scene, and I command my troops like they've been desperately asking me to, then I will achieve victory in no less than thirty minutes. I Nathan, guarantee. Future you. Right, right Cap killers are banned. From now on, forever <laughs> on the PCP, it's over. My uh, listen, listen. All yeah. I'm saying, all I'm saying is that you know, not yet. This is just a stopgap measure from when I can make mm-hmm. my full time job um, developing <laughs> endless war. Okay. By which I mean, yeah. <laughs> by which I mean, by which I mean, thinking of things to do with endless war, trying to do it, failing, and then Whoa. asking Crack to do it uh, for me. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, uh, endless war. Uh, that's your job. Who are you, Donald Trump? <laughs> Syria? Am I right, everybody? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we got each other on the back. Got him. Yeah. Oh. Um, uh, but 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 yeah. the, the actual serious question is, of course, like I, I assume you plan to still do comics and stuff. Yeah, yeah, th- yeah. That's the whole. That's the whole point. I'm 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 gonna be like my my goal is that I can make money while I like do art, kind of intermittently. You know. Okay. Yeah. Now we're okay. actually talking about jobs. Sounds good. We're you know, about... trying trying to trying to shape my life in such a way that I can get my shit done without. You know, without neglecting, you know, 
my my stuff. Your passion. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, there passion. you have it right there. Ben taking responsibility for his life, recognizing he has to make a change, I, I, I'm assuming, in order to reach some financial goal or whatever. And, and here he is doing it, all right? So I don't want to hear no fucking excuses. If even Ben can do it, yeah. anybody yeah. can do it. <laughs> he, he needed the second Oculus Rift. One wasn't yeah. enough. <laughs> oh, my God. Ben, need one for each eye. HTC yeah. Vive Saint. Now, that would be the one for Whoa. the modern age. Guys, right? that's too advanced. Let, let me ask you this. It's time mm-hmm. to max the, revive. It, 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 it's, it's, oh. Me. Oh, oh, yes. it, it's me, Munchie, <laughs> Tribune of the Plebs, the Procrastinator mm-hmm. Senate we have before us. Everyone wants to hear stories. People want to see the personal yeah. raw experiences about the stories that we've had doing our selective jobs. We want to, we right. want to hear Nate groan about, I don't know, furniture or some shit. We don't even know about that. I'm talking yeah. about the people yeah. right now. Wait a second. Why have we been talking Nate, about like I philosophy know you... and like governments? I don't None know. of that matters. Let's get into where are the memes? We need the memes. He's right. Uh, was Davu saying something there? Nay, I was I just so. thinking, you already have mm. such a messianic complex. Does that have anything to mm. do with, mm. with making furniture out of wood and being like a carpenter or some shit? <laughs> like, what the fuck is wrong? Well, you know, it's like, uh, so I, I guess the, the, the job I was referring to there was, uh, like I said before, working at Pier 1. Worked at Pier 1 for uh, a year or two. Uh, uh, my job was, ba- I did some of the, like, upfront, just people buying shit. You know, your job was basically, like, push sales of all kinds of... <clears throat> Bullshit. But uh, what I what I much preferred to do, my favorite thing to do there, which was like my my m- sort of my main responsibility was, you know, Pier One is is to to some degree a furniture store. Uh, so we would get these big boxes of furniture in, and it would be my job. And then like th- there were other guys who would like come in. It was it was all women who worked there. But then like the guys who worked there were the ones who would like build the furniture, just because we were bigger, I guess. Um, and so I would just sit in the back. I would uh, open up box after box after box and assemble like IKEA style, extremely simple furniture pieces to put together. And I would just I would sit there uh, and I would commune with God, and my halo would appear and I would invent the table. <laughs> I am Jesus is what I'm saying. <laughs> remember, uh, guys, you know, guys, remember you know? in fucking um, Passion of the Christ at the beginning when Jesus mm-hmm. like literally invents the long legged table. Yes, is that Wait, true? Did that yeah, happen in, in Passion, that movie? It starts out. Some someone is like, Gibson. Is like someone Wait, is like, wow, well, what shit. is this weird? What is this weird table you're making, Jesus? And he's like, oh, see, Dude. you know, it, it's it's a it's got long legs, but you sit, you know, at taller chairs. And guys, the guy's like, oh, it'll never catch on. Did I talk oh. with this with you guys? Or I don't think I did. It just so happened like a week ago. I was just sitting in the back of the car. I think yeah, with my parents. It was, mm-hmm. so it was a few weeks ago. My parents are in the car. Like my sister's in the car, and I'm just sort of sitting in the back seat and just randomly accessing memories in my brain. And I remember having seen the beginning of the Passion of the Christ, which I hadn't seen since I was like a kid. So I didn't really at the time I took that scene for granted. But now I'm like, what the fuck? It's like one yeah. of those like time travel movies where like someone bumps into Ben Franklin, you know, and it's like, oh man, you know, you should put yeah. a key in a bottle or some shit. But it's like a Jesus movie, you know? Like it's a fucking Jesus movie where like it's not only that he died for our sins, but he also invented the long <laughs> Long-legged table. Is there is there any <laughs> evidence that there is a that connection Jesus there? That Jesus didn't invent the long-legged table. <laughs> yeah, is there not, any evidence the, the conjure? We just we just needed to, to sit a little bit closer to heaven, and Jesus was there. There you go. go. Yeah. Oh, 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 God damn. So guys, Thanks, what do you Mel say? Gibson. Radcon four. We have the last. We supper. make long-legged tables. <laughs> We invent oh, the even no. longer-legged table. It's the so PCP. It can be closer the, to Jesus. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it, it's the PCP, the Pro Carpenters podcast. Mm, That's yeah. yep. soon. The Pro Christinators um, podcast. I, I don't. I don't personally have much more to say about that job, but that was the job that I worked while I was making Gurren Lagann video part one and part Legendary. two. So like. I would I would by day I'd be fucking building furniture and you know selling people shit at Pier One. Then I'd come home and I and would build, work be on building my, mines. I'd be I'd be mining. So Nate, what fucking motivates you? What what is it inside of you that makes you go building well, oh, furniture? Oh, oh, Nate, no, uh, but mm. Nate, before you answer that, I I want to yeah. see to Javu Radcon mm-hmm. Four Jesus lecture where you explain the history and life of Jesus Christ. A Jesus <laughs> lecture. I don't know. I think I probably could have my dad do that lecture, but Ooh. yeah, okay. Nate, yeah. Nate can go. Okay. Well, yeah, what uh, fucking, what's the fire that's lit under your ass that makes you go, I'm going to make this whole video on this shitty laptop? Um, You know what it is? It's fear. 
It's uh, well, I think for a lot me, of things it's are motivated fear. by fear. A lot of things are motivated by fear, and there's oh, probably God. some degree of that, like fear <sighs> of like go out. being unworthy in life fear, and like allowing fear of being myself unworthy. to fear of fear of looking back and regretting all the things you didn't do. Yeah, that's what motivates but, me. Uh, that, that, that's a fair. It's a fair thing. It's a fair thing, and I think I that's fear kind that. of I'm helpful. That. That's my life. <laughs> well, well, there you go. Um, I guess like I don't know. A lot of it really does come from like. When I was growing up, I just felt shitty about myself. It just like I wasn't doing like I don't know. Like it really, I, I know it's weird, and it's, it's, I come back to a lot. But a lot of it comes back to I think my issues with women, and like how I felt like such a failure, and that I was completely failing when all my friends were like superior to me. And then I realized I didn't want to be, nor did I have to be inferior anymore. Like I could fix myself, and then I did. And then once I did that, I was like, well, let's keep this train rolling. Uh, I I think like and like I don't want to take all credit. Like Ben is the one who suggested we even make videos in the first place. So he's the one who like turned me on to even the possibility Fucking of doing this kind of nailed stuff. Nailed it. It was a good, I'm, I'm sure glad it happened. And then just when I was in it, I discovered how much I enjoyed doing it. And then, I, I don't know, man, like it's like that particular video series or whatever. I just really liked that show. I was mad that people were explaining it poorly and I like wanted to correct the record. But the right. real Bit thing at the root of it. That, that, that particular yeah. show that, whose name must not be mentioned. <laughs> indeed, indeed. The but, Voldemort of anime. <laughs> that's what they call it. Um, uh, it. I guess I just really have things I want to achieve in life. Like I, these days, I spend a pretty large God, amount of time and it keeps thinking going about out. like how I admire Cenk Uger of the Young Turks, and I know that's a weird, a weird guy to pick out of that out of a hat. But like, apart from the political issues, I strongly disagree with him on. I look at this guy who was like, he was some fat virgin, like 25 year old asshole who was like a super political nerd. But now he's got like a huge network and like a huge successful business where like he works with all these fascinating people. He gets to meet all these amazing people and like do all these cool things. He's not in as good a shape as he could be. So I'm, I'm going to, you know, <laughs> going to, going to be working on that. But, uh, like, I, I, I really spend a lot of my time thinking about like the male role models in my life. I want to be like, and I, just try to live the way they would. I, I guess. spend a lot of my time thinking mm-hmm. about how the Penny Arcade guys live mm. and how I want mm. to live like them and how I'm closer than I ever thought I would be, but there's still yeah. a long mm. way to go. I mean, and I think about Red Letter Media too. Just yeah. for, I know we talk about them a lot, but the, like that's... The, the Penny Arcade guys, you know, they just, they, they, they fucking built an intellectual property that mm-hmm. now like has turned, like turned, you know, and they expanded their operations and they turned into these like media juggernauts. And what they, what, you know, the end result of that is that now they can spend like literally 100, well, not 100, like so much of their mm-hmm. time can be devoted to them just pursuing whatever they want to do. Like Tycho can just go and fucking make raps with that other guy. And that's Does fine. He do that? And <laughs> they can fucking bullshit around with their stupid, uh, uh boy scouts in the woods, D and D setting that nobody Love. can cares about but it's totally fine and i'm sure they have a great time with it that's how i want to live they've added around doing whatever i want these guys have added a ton of value to the world and now they get to enjoy the benefits you know like they fucking the first thing i was real like i was always aware of uh uh, what's the name of their comic it penny arcade right it's (laughs) it's called penny arcade right uh it's just um like you showed me what was that show strip search strip Strip search Search. yeah that's the kind of that's the kind of thing they can just do on a whim and, like, if they hadn't spent, like, a decade or decades or whatever it was, like, building up themselves to the point where they had the resources to, like, create that show that they probably never even imagined they'd be making, like, at the start, it's because they gave themselves power. I'll say it, yeah. man. I'm in it for yeah. power. I want the power to control my life yeah. and do fun things I want to do. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm in for. That's for what me, I'm doing. For me, I, it's really like a holy war in, in the name mm-hmm. of proliferating the art and society but mostly just art that i want there to be uh but in my honor right like when i hear (laughs) when i when i when i when i whenever i read up or or watch youtube videos about the fucking roman warriors i'm like they have my mentality um and we wear the same number of skirts probably (laughs) and like you know you know what they called you know what they called uh if i remember correctly the roman soldiers devu legionnaires 
Tavu is yeah. Legion, is the joke I'm trying to make. Yes, there you I go. am. All right. Forgot about like, that one. This crystal. Yep. Where are in my the mind. memes? Where have all the memes <laughs> There's gone? There's one. I'm doing my best. They have. They the, have. No. They have. We. We. Yeah. They've. They've fall, fallen into obscurity. They need to be max revived. You know that's what they true. called? You know what they called Roman soldiers back in the day? They called them Tavus. That's what we're doing <laughs> now, right, right now. Did you know? <laughs> so fucking like. I mean, you know, I think it's pretty appropriate. My fucking fiance, she's always complaining about her sister, whose name is Sam, and mm-hmm. one of her ex friends, whose name is Sam. And I'm like, you're in the Sam Night Wars, the first and second Sam Night Wars. And it's like, do you think of in any language that isn't Roman history? And I'm like, no. Wait, is that a real word? Sam Night? Yeah, the fucking Romans kicked the shell of the Sam Knights. Oh, yeah. did okay, the Sam Knights now I, now have jobs? It. Any fucking. Uh, fucking antiquity <laughs> history buffs laughed at that joke. You see, you have I'm to, sure they did. I'm, you I'm have sure to, they you did. have to cast uh, a shitload of stupid miniature nets to get random people in the audience. You see, but, you know we've the, the PCB has splintered into minuscule individualized memes for different groups to appreciate. Yeah, to fucking that's what we're going for now. Groups for tutorials, yeah. okay. like like the history buffs, like the history buffs. Every audience yeah. member and the, is sitting waiting. When when will my memes come? Uh, yeah, all right. I, I, got, fucking, I gotta sit through all these all these bargain that's exactly, bin that's, it's the Disney princess mentality. Like, your group isn't real and doesn't really exist, or no one gives a shit, unless you have a Disney princess associated with your ethnic or religious group. That's how it works. That's how it works. Right. I'm never going to get a okay. Muslim Disney princess. I'm waiting. Uh, well, I'm there's Jasmine. Waiting. There's Jasmine. Yeah. She's oh, not. Sure. She, she's she's, she's, a, she's a good look Christian look wife. Look, look at what she's wearing, Nate. Come on. Fucking, well, okay. Goddamn. Slave, Back to the know. topic here. This this mentality yeah. in myself was finally I understood Jasmine it. is Islamic. That's the topic of the podcast okay i'm sorry i'm sorry it was, i mean um, we could debate whether or not jasmine is a muslim for, for ages there, we could right. never reach a consensus jasmine versus islam the new bonus episode <laughs> that's a good one that's a good one when hippo was saying in the chat earlier that you know when i really think about it creating a cult around myself like developing mm-hmm. hardcore fans is really just exactly the same as uh, getting the algorithms. You're basically just doing a, a humiliating rain dance and tooling your content and persona to get a certain specific result. Neither one of them is doing what you want to do as an artist, right? It's kind of the way he was putting but, it. But you get if you've got if you've got a following that gives you power, and having right. power lets you do the things that you want to do. And 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 doing what you want will lead to success if if you just do it consistently and you work yeah. hard. Guys, but, can I? I'm sorry, sorry to cut in. Can I just bring you a, a, a brief moment of joy that just happened in real time in my life yes, while yeah, I was please. on this yeah, podcast? I get a message from Michelle. That who just says uh, Nate's a father and why let's go up no, for him. It's, I, it's just that she says uh, uh, someone she's at work right now. I I, I picked her up yesterday. Uh, she she just sent me by saying, "Hey Nate, just thought you should know." Someone just asked me, "Hey Michelle, were you here with the big muscular bodybuilder last night?" And they literally asked if I was a bodybuilder. <laughs> oh my fucking god! Uh, I know I okay. don't deserve it, but it makes me feel good. Okay, fuck off. All right, I'm Man, sorry, Nate. I really like uh, really Munchie. Emotional. I really like this idea brag. of Nate having a kid. And when the, the mm. moment I thought of Nate having a kid, I was reminded of this YouTube Barats and Beretta skit, where there's this guy who's training his like year and a half old daughter to be like world class Olympian. And like giving her weights and throwing her all around. That's, that's what, what I, I will Nate, do with all my that children. Sounds that is like what Nate. I will do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, 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 I know you told that me. You've, you've laid out you explicitly the, the like the the the, the horrific <laughs> regimen you have planned out <laughs> I, to make I'm sure sorry. your kids can be all they can be. Well, li- listen, Ben. Exactly as you said, uh, delay gratification. I will delay all gratification from my children until they are eighteen. They will not know an old. ounce of happiness or joy in their life until they reach the age of eighteen. My children will have the ultimate coom when they leave the nest and they realize they are so much better than all these scum no. out there in the fucking world who did not wear fucking training masks and weights for the time they were not, one not fucking until, day old. That not, they'll, they'll know no pleasure <laughs> until they rip the still beating heart from your enemy's breasts. That's right. A.K.A. me. Like I will be their adversary every the day. When they conquer me, I know they transcended. 
That's, oh my that's God. the end goal. That's the but end goal. Every weird utilitarianism is doomed to be killed by his own children, who he lives in permanent antagonism with. Th th that would be the final challenge. The day they reach 18, you'll stand in front of the door, and, and you'll have their back, you'll, your back turned to them, and you'll slowly <laughs> turn around and be like, your final challenge is to defeat me in hand-to-hand -hand yes. combat. And they'll that's be like, good. what, <laughs> Dad? <laughs> and meanwhile, <laughs> <laughs> while they're stuttering, you make your first move and stab your son <laughs> through his heart. <laughs> you should have acted <laughs> sooner. Too slow, pussy. Too fucking yeah. slow. Luckily, I've I've got several clones of you lined up and going to succeed where you fucking failed. Number 27, get the fuck dead. That's what I'll say. That's what I'll say. It'll be great. You'll say, get in the ground, fuck you dead. fucking nigger. There, that's what it'll be. That's what it'll be. Because this is my wife's son, just to clarify. Um, you know. That's, oh, no. that's, my, yeah, that's what it okay, is. That's, okay. that's what it is. Uh, <laughs> all right. Where were well jobs well, right? Yeah, I was talking about my, my full time job. Stay, uh, stay at home, dad. To my wife's son is my full time yeah, job. Yeah. That's what I'm doing every day. Uh, please don't bully me. This is a real job. Someone has to do it. God damn it! I deserve respect. I'm a human being. Uh, that's Wait, it. someone has to do it. We all know. We all know that Tyrone can't do it. We. we I, I just gotta take up. I just gotta take up the mantle. Yeah, yeah that's right. Ben, that's you've right. done jobs before. You were just talking about jobs. Yeah. Um. Should I list them? Yes. Yeah, that sounds fun. That's let's all list our jobs. Okay, let's I like list that. our jobs. Like um, well, let's see. When I was in high school, I worked at Mrs. Fields Cookies in the mall. Yeah, nice. um, yeah. I worked. Whoa. I went. You drew I, fancy designs on them. I remember that. Yeah, it was really fun. Actually, it was like way fun when I had to decorate cakes. Um, hmm. I I I was a counselor at Astro Camp for like six months there. Uh, I worked at, uh, I was I was a, a food runner. After that was over, I was a food runner at this restaurant called The Chateau that actually we just went to when we were in Boston. It was Oh it was, yeah, it was nice. Yeah, yeah, nice. I, worked, I worked at that restaurant. And I actually, this was like eight years ago or like seven years ago. And I saw people there that I re barely recognized out of the corner of my mind. I was like, oh my God, they're still here. Oh no. I escaped, but they're still here. Yeah. Um, so that was harrowing. Um, <laughs> uh, God, what the, f I don't know, I was a... Uh, I, don't know, I had a bunch of shitty fucking Poland, jobs. Fucking they didn't Poland matter. Job. I was like a, I did like document editing for some company. I was just like editing that I would, I did that from home for the most. Part. I had a cubicle in an office, but I almost never went to it. I mostly just worked it from home. They would send me assignments. I would do mm. them, send it back. Bada bing, bada boom. I was like sort of an engineer, but mostly I just like, mostly I just like took readings off of an electron microscope at this place called Integris uh, in in Bel in Bel Belarica, Belarica, whatever. Mm. I never learned how to say the town's name. <laughs> um and uh I wait there's more oh and I was the Poland one what about in Poland oh yeah yeah and then I taught I taught physics to to Arab kids in Poland for like <laughs> oh, no. several months <laughs> yes nice I think that's nice. a pretty exhaustive list of my jobs it b b Ben the real mental powerhouse behind 9/11 you can thank him for its success yep. oh, this, was post, uh, this was post 9/11 of course oh, okay yeah. they, the were, they were all very, they were all very high too. spirits. God, um, I can't imagine what it must have been like to be alive during 9/11 and like being able to like like perceive it as oh, being God. true. That's incredible. Yeah, that I mean, I would say that, that that for me is the div dividing line between like millennials and then millennial 2.0s. If you don't remember distinctly 9/11 happening, then you're. I'll tell you right now, Munchie, you missed a hell of a party. You missed a hell I of know, a good time. I know. You I know? wish I had been no. there. Too, no. I was. I was just mm. in the plane. I was having to. I had, I had something <laughs> to attend to. <laughs> Uh, hey, I'll, I'll just run through my jobs real fast because yeah, uh, we're, all, we're all doing it. Um, my first job was I worked for our next door neighbor, Ralph. And I worked like he had like a, a big party. Like he, he had a big um, fucking bit of land in front of his house where like he would hold like events. So people would like have weddings there and they'd like do stuff like that. I worked there uh, as like a caterer and just like a, a guy who would stand around and like watch and like make sure and clean up stuff. And I, I worked there for like a couple months. That was on and off. Uh, got a job at uh, Papa Gino's Pizzeria. Yeah, in, uh, was, that's the good shit. That's my favorite kind of pizza to this day. Stealing your dad, Papa Gino's, man. man. Pretty. Sweet. Oh yeah, I, there will be a stealing your dad uh, on Papa <laughs> Gino's. I'm very excited. I want to watch that. Uh, I want to know. I want to know an in depth review of this Papa Gino's pizza, which I'm sure you will do. Oh, oh, um, we get we get deeper in depth than you have ever <laughs> dwelled before. Let me see. In in co I think that was the last job I did before college. Uh, in college, I worked as a librarian at our award-winning school library at the College of New Jersey, where I went. That's my my alma mater. Um, I uh, while also while I was working there, I got like a small little gig to like make a program for a guy that he paid me for. I just didn't do it though. Um, that's <laughs> oh. really the long and short of it. What was uh, the program I just, supposed to be? 
I, I, you know, I can't even remember like what the point of it was, but like I basically, this is my first like quote unquote job as a programmer. The guy, like I met him through my job at the library. He just was like, hey, I want to like this thing to do this. And I, we had a couple meetings and then like a couple months passed where I was supposed to be working on it. And I just presented him like fuck all that I'd done. He was like, wow, this is like terrible. And I, this is not, you did not do the work. And I'm just like, no, I did a good job. I'm really I'm good. Uh, I'm deeply ashamed of it to this day. Um, beyond that, uh, I think after college, I just got a job at, I worked at a pizza place for a little while, uh, making some shitty ass pizzas for this like mom and pop place. They were, they were, uh, Coptic Christian Egyptians. Uh, they were cool. They loved Jesus. They the loved Coptic Jesus. Is. Um, might have, that might be the wrong word. Whatever. They were just like super Christ faggy uh, they, Egyptians. They, they, they had haptic technology. They, they, they vibrate <laughs> Yeah, like touch. I, I would feel yeah. them and they would you know, respond <laughs> okay. to my touch in real time. Um, yeah. That's how the pizzas were all made. Uh, <laughs> I, I asked the man to tell me the secret recipe for his secret sauce, and he would not tell me. He would and, not and, and tell then he me. started to unbuckle his pants, and you're like, actually, I don't need to know that bad. Yeah, that's how it went. <laughs> uh, so I worked there. Then I worked at Best Buy for like a year or two. Um, that was okay. I, I had some amazing uh, fucking stories about the things that happened in that fucking place. Like that's where I met the guy who I had literally the moment that made me realize all weed was bad and evil forever yeah. uh, at yeah. that, at that job. I just, I was just around these people who were just big weed guys and recognized. I never wanted to be around them ever again God. or anyone like them. Parkour um, dude. 91 was such yeah. an unbelievable, good, like, like good, like <laughs> experience for me to uh -huh. see to hate in weed. real time. This uh -huh. person hopped up on weed, doing bad things. It doesn't matter that it was all yeah. faked and not real. That doesn't matter. That, that, no, that, that's not no. a problem. It's your all, all that matters is that as it, it instilled in me the knowledge, the knowledge, mm -hmm. the objective true fact that weed makes you retarded. And and, and I'm so sure to this day. Thank you so fucking much, Parkour dude. You, you've you've done a real solid for me. You say you saved one from that 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 green hell known as the ma the, the M life. The that, M that was life. one of the reasons why he wanted to do it was, was to like really? portray like gamer <laughs> weed culture as terrible and in in, in, in literal is. hopes to inspire people to not be like the person he was presenting. That is he on record as saying that? Said. Is that true? True? Yeah, 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 that's true. Dude, yeah, dude, no, like, right, right after, like, audience, right after we recorded that lecture, Munchie took us upstairs and showed us the video where he reveals himself as a fake. And then that's he true. goes on his that's diatribe true. explaining his motivations, and I'm like, oh, Parkour Dude's mission was born out of hatred and contempt. It wasn't just lighthearted yeah. poking fun at. He's, like, really seriously despises the kind of thing he was parodying, and he was just going full tilt propaganda against it. Holy shit. Mm -hmm. Nate, I feel like you would yeah. really like Jan Rinkowski. I f because mm -hmm. he is, it, he's like, I feel like both him and Sam Hyde are like, 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 they moonlight in philosophy. But I feel they like definitely Jan do, yeah. is really like, Jan really has a, a principle that I really enjoy. And I try and do, but I'm not very good at. And I, I need, I, I've been thinking about it and I want to do it more. Where mm -hmm. your comedy is rooted in the things that you believe. And, 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 and like your, your comedy is rooted in, uh, like, like how you want, uh, to perceive reality. That is 100% like true. And I think about that a lot when yeah. I'm, when I'm trying to do stuff. Yeah, when I, I I I kind of think that comedy without that is just inherently less valuable. Uh, but you know, whatever. I, I can understand just goof for the sake of a goof. Uh, hey, just, let me just finish my last jobs here. Yeah, uh, course, it, it, all I did, I worked at Pier One, and now I got my current programming job, and that's it. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm done. I'm out. That's all my jobs. Um, um, Devu, you mm. you you clone some woundos, right? What? I, I... <laughs> Yeah, that's all I've done. I've never actually had a real job. I just fucking worked with my dad on cleaning windows mm -hmm. and cleaning out gutters. Yeah, really interesting because looking back, I think I the, the, the way in which I ran at YouTube clearly reflects that job because that job was totally unfulfilling, but like totally mm -hmm. not stressful. Because when it's just, you know, you, you're there and your fucking dad and your brother, it's not like you have to, like, put on a huge... When you're there and you're persona. fucking your dad and your brother. Mm -hmm. Understood. I'm with you, dude. I'm with you. Like, I only gotta be professional... I only gotta, like, be professional attitude when uh, there's a fucking customer there, you know? That's yeah, fine. Yeah. But it was, it was pretty low pressure, right? And it's mm -hmm. a pretty easy job to do. Like, the, the thing about... The reason why my dad has a successful business doing that is that no one wants to clean the windows, which is why you can never get a consistent employee. Like, you, no one... You can never mm -hmm. get a decent window cleaner, but 
if it's someone who's in your family, then they have to give a shit. Like, it was weird watching, like, familial <laughs> bonds force me to actually do a good job, even though I openly yeah. didn't give a shit. The point is, despite being very, like, physically draining, it wasn't that draining, and it wasn't, like, emotionally or psychologically draining, because you can just be like, oh, hey, I have 20 windows to clean right here, pops in earbuds, listens to entire podcasts, so it's pretty yeah. easy. Mm. So I had plenty of time to like think all day. So it was actually a pretty easy, a pretty great job to then transition into being an internet person. But also it took my very specific mentality of absolutely hating it if I'm spending any time not doing what I want to do and thinking that I'm making something important that I actually give a shit about. If I spend any time not doing that, I want to die. So there you know, you I, I feel you on that. But incidentally, speaking of family jobs, I totally forgot about this. I was the guy who filed my dad's paperwork for a long time. I totally forgot about it. But, oh uh, man, yeah, I did I that for years. I remember filing dad's paperwork. Yeah, it, like, I actually kind of loved it because I get to watch Star Trek while I do it, and it, I, I would did listen that to, all day. I, I would listen to podcasts while doing it. Um, mm, yeah, I, yeah, I hated doing it because I was like, man, I could be spending my time so much better because he would pay like eight dollars an hour. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Was dude, like, my dad would do that stuff, that kind of stuff too, even before he had like, a business. He'd be like, like hey. honestly, I would not have done it even though he was paying me. But like, he kind of like insisted that we do it. So, yeah. Well, hey, we were living with his house rent free, so yeah, you know. yeah. All right, I guess that's it was it. pretty good of him to pay anything. True, Tom. Um, okay, so my first job was in high school, and I got, I went to Papa Gino's, just like Nate did. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I worked there just Damn. to buy a computer, because I didn't have a Tom, computer. let's literally open a Papa Gino's franchise, just you and me. We should. Dude, dude, We're guys, old school employees. My they'll, they'll mom be killed and to get dad, us. their first mom like, high school dad. job was both Sonic. They both worked at the Sonic restaurant as their first job. Oh, yeah? Even Is that they how they met? met? No, they met each other like decades later or like 15 years later, but they still like that was that just coincidence, right? But they still That's worked cool. at Sonic. <laughs> no. <laughs> all right. So sorry, Tom. Didn't mean to. No, it's, it's all good. Uh, Papa Jim was the first job. Then I went to college um, and I worked at the cafeteria at the school for a while making sandwiches. Um, mm -hmm. And then I also did like the uh, the desk thing, like where you like sign people into like the dorms and stuff. I did that for a while. Um, and then I got a job at Apple while I was in school. So I would go down oh. the street to the mall and I'd work as the guy who, like, you talk to about computers and shit. And I did that for, like, almost oh, the did Apple that. geniuses. That's pretty cool. You were an Apple genius. Uh, I was, like, the specialist. I was the one who, like, sold you stuff. I wanted to be a genius, but they Damn. were like, you got to work your way up to that. But, yeah, I did that. It was It's funny because, hmm. like, to this day, everything that I've done – like when I've gone in to talk to people about jobs, everyone's like floored mm -hmm. that I work for Apple. They're like, what the fuck? Did you That's design crazy. the Galaxy S5? <laughs> oh, God, I wish. Dude, look at my iPhone. Was this you? Was this you, Tom? Mm -hmm. Just yeah. tell me. When Steve Jobs died, Chinese I took guy over. guy who put it together? <laughs> yeah, that was me. Um, <laughs> so I did that. Then mm -hmm. I worked during the summers at Hanscom Air Force Base with my dad. Uh, mm -hmm. We're not with him. I was, like, in a totally different building doing something completely unrelated. But um, I did that for a while. Uh, then when I got out of school, I worked at Best Buy for the season, and it was done. Hey, dumb. are we then, the same guy? Yes. yes. We that's are the best this, and worst guy yeah, ever. That's, that's that the canon. dynamic. Yeah. yeah. Then, uh, oh, my God. It, this runs so deep. This runs it's so deep. deep, dude. We need to do our best guy, worst guy podcast. It's going to be great. That's a gr that's oh, my a God. True. Literally, literally do, that actually. should be what happens. I agree. Um, the communists and the capitalists finally clash. Oh, no. Those two, <laughs> those two ideologies finally get compared to At one another last. after all these years. <laughs> I don't think the universe can handle it, but... <laughs> Cold yeah, War II begins. Um, then, by, by, by the way... Uh, oh, huh? it, it, continue, Tom. Oh, I was just going to say, after that, I went to Staples for a little bit, and that sucked. Mm. Then I went to uh, Whole Foods, and I was like a sign maker. I did like graphic design and stuff there. And that was... Oh, okay. nice. I worked there Is longest. that where we got our legendary groceries for Radcon? Um, um, no. No. We did not we go. Shaw's. We got Shaw's. Yeah, Shaw's. Shaw's no, 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 no. The the first, the first, the first place that me and Tom went to. Uh, no, I don't think we went to Whole Foods. Star no, Market. Trader Star Joe's. We went to Star Market, which is like the total opposite of Whole Foods. Whole Foods yeah, is like a high, high end, like organic food place. Um, and that was like the healthiest I'd ever been when I worked at Whole Foods. I had to do nothing but eat food there. But the only thing I could afford to eat was Caesar salads. 
because everything was so expensive. So I ate <laughs> yeah. nothing. I ate nothing but Caesar salad Sick. for like a year, and I lost a ton of weight, and it was great. Um, but I, I lost that job because I was like too uh, uh, retarded. Uh, yeah, <laughs> retarded. No, I was like I was too trying what? to do too much. Like I try and like solve problems, and they'd be like get fucked. And eventually they're just hmm. like, we're tired of you trying to solve problems. Get out here. We want to be shit. Uh, that um, sounds slightly like a simplification. You were you were too okay, – maybe you, you overextended yourself and then got not enough done or something. Is no, that the issue? Like the, the problem no? was that like I would suggest ways of making things better, and they didn't want anybody okay. to rock the boat, I guess. Oh. And, Wait, okay, which show was okay. this, Tom? Uh, Whole Foods. I see. Mm-hmm. Trying to make yeah. things better. Like, what if we had some fucking unhealthy things here so that people would actually no, buy like, our shit? No, because I worked. I worked <laughs> up. I, I didn't work on the floor. There was like an upstairs where they made all the signage and stuff. Because all the whole signs of yeah, Whole Foods yeah. are done by hand. So I'd have to like mm. write. I had to like do a bunch of classes to learn how to do the Whole Foods handwritten font. There's like classes you had to take Damn. on how to do that. So Fancy. I had to learn how to do that. And then like you just write these big signs, and then you had to like draw and cut out on like foam board and stuff, like illustrations. To like, they must be losing so much money by using that system. It's absolutely, to train absolutely. To make a wow. handwriting font. It's their goddamn branding, it's, though. They yeah, got to it's do really it. Stupid. I love that they have this this corporate fucking pipeline to artificially induce that homemade yeah, aesthetic. Yeah, it's so fucking yeah, man. Like, do they, do they like? Hey, we need to go and pick out the individual coffee beans, but first we need to put you in baggy, shitty like overalls and then like make you look <laughs> ethnic. Probably. Like, <laughs> Yeah, so that was dumb. And, and uh. but I was like I was trying to like we had these two computers to do all the work on. And one of them was like a really really old Power Mac G5 and it was a piece of shit. And and mm-hmm. I, they had files on both computers. So if you were there were three people in the office including me, they would be on mm. the computers, I'd be doing all the bitch work cuz I was the newest person. And if they sure. needed to get a file off the other computer, they had to stop what they're doing get off, go on the other computer, get the file and bring it over. And I was like, I can network these. Like, give me some time and I can network them together so you can access the files from each other's system so you don't have to yeah, keep stopping. Yeah. And they like, let me, give me like an hour to do it. And I'm like, it's going to take more than this. And they're like, well, forget it. You suck. We hate you. And what there was like just the tons of like little things about how like the signs were made. They're like, we could do this faster, but they like refused. And eventually they're just like, get out. So that's how I lost that job. Um, okay. Okay. And then I started doing Patreon for a while. Never try and fix the world ever is the moral. That was the moral of the story. Never give up. Sometimes corporate uh, systems can be too rigid and and we we clash with them. It's true. But never give up on fixing the world, even if some people. Embargo and boycott Whole Foods. That is the (laughs) moral of this message. Uh, And then the the last job I had, I had a job for, I think, a week doing at a racquetball office, Mm -hmm. doing like paperwork for them. And it was like the most dumb job in the world because i originally uh one of my f- mom's friends told me about it because she works for, like a hiring agency and she was trying to get people to fill the slot and i needed a job mm-hmm. she's like do this it's work from home it's like 15 dollars an hour and mm-hmm. you'll be doing like social media stuff like getting their social media okay. brand account set up and i was like oh yeah i can do that in my sleep sure so i like go through all these like ridiculous bullshit like trying to talk to people to get the job signed up and during that time it changed from work from home to come into our office an hour away and from $15 right, to $10 right. so and I was just like I was already, I'd already signed the paperwork at that point the day before I went into work they're like by the way we're only giving you uh, a two thirds of what we said that the price was going to be so I go in there and I just like it's not social media branding anymore they just want me to like do data entry so the entire job was a lie and I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. So I was there for a week. And then a week, uh, the next week, they I got an email when I woke up before I was going to go into work saying, uh, we actually decided we don't want anyone to have this position because it's too expensive. So you're fired. <laughs> and it was yeah, you the, know what? this... Uh, your fucking Christ. your stories about all these everyone just seems to fuck you over all the time and it reminds me of the do, opposite. Do, 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 are you starting to understand why my life is awful? <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, let's and like it wait, next PCP wait. episode the PCP fucks over Tom and we I kick just, him out and we take his money. <laughs> I yeah, just remembered good. the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Okay. And it was when I got fired. Well, I didn't get fired. They just like stopped the hire. They just stopped paying me. <laughs> Um, yes, that's a diplomatic from that, term that for job it. where I was like doing document editing for whatever company. Uh-huh. Um, I did not know. I had no idea that this is how it worked. But, you know, I did that job for maybe six months. Um, this was like kind of during the TBAP days or maybe yeah, a little before. Yeah. And um, so it turned out afterwards that I 
I didn't know about unemployment insurance, but mm, apparently mm. if you work like a real job or a real enough job, you know, they just bank a bunch of money with the government. And then if you lose the job under like the, the right circumstances, like if they lay you off or whatever, um, if, if they, whatever, um, you just get more money, like even though you're not working. And so right. like for like several months or for maybe, for maybe like two months or more after that, I was getting like two hundred dollars a week in the mail and i was like huh. that's or no it was like 150 dollars a week and i was like oh my god it's this is all like like i was living in a shitty little side room of some guy's apartment i was like i can basically live off this like i don't i'm not working <laughs> but i can live and it's like a miracle uh, um and you know that's uh, that, 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 that set in for? motion you know that and then i hatched a plan to live that way for the mm-hmm. rest of my life and yeah. uh, right know. yeah so it was this unfortunate series of events that led to your current mindset about lowering your standards to adjust to whatever yeah. whatever you're currently being given out of, the, out of the pity of people's hearts. Yeah, exactly. It's funny, it's funny you mentioned right, that. Like, that's the origin story. Like this job, Fascinating. The, the racquetball job was actually like amazing because like I what didn't What a racket, am I right? It, it was. <laughs> it was it was incredible. Like I made negative <laughs> money working for this job because what? because of the driving or something. Because because they I had initially gone there to get a work from home because I did my car was broken and I didn't have the money mm-hmm. to fix it. So so I got sure. the job because there was supposed oh, to be a work at home oh, position. So then they said, well, it's actually a driving in position. So I had to get my car fixed, which was $600. And then I only got $150 <laughs> before I was fired. So I made negative <laughs> $450 working for this company. <laughs> which was amazing. Oh. Yeah, it was, First it was, of all, Nate, I can understand why you're so fucking utilitarian and objectivist sometimes when like, because mm-hmm. pe- I mean, you hear people all the time go, oh, it's a false stereotype that there's all these people who just wouldn't work at all if they didn't have to. But like your older brother kind of is like that. So but, I yeah, guess Ben I guess did it, it, everyone. It it's Ben. I did what? What you, you just like you're you're one of these guys who doesn't want to have to work any harder. And if someone just gave you money, of course you'd take it, you know, well, just why be a not? leech forever. Who wouldn't? Because you're not, you, oh, oh, I'll, I'll tell you why, Ben, and it's because you will not have real power over your life. You'll always be dependent on people, and that's not fun. That's but, very oh, stressful. Well, listen, the only thing that I want power for is to be mm. able to do whatever I want. But and what if they if, take it if, away and one if day? And if I have that, if I, if, if I can have that, you know, without, you know, working for it, like, like mm-hmm. if, if I can have that on, like, relatively little, uh, uh, you know, resources, then it, like, what would more resources even gain me? Uh, I mean, the, the, really, the only thing that the greater number of resources gain you, which I would understand if people didn't put as a priority, but it's just a bigger safety net if things go yeah. wrong or change. That's yeah. really what it comes down to. I, I like a big safety net. I do. I admit sure, it. Sure, sure. That's all. It's just if if I'm all if I'm managing to do everything that I want mm-hmm. with relatively little, you know, it's not. I don't have much motivation to strive for more. I have big goals got, for cause my I, cause life because I, I already because in that situation I've already achieved the goal. I, I, it is. It is coming to my attention. But a safety net is true, and you know, yeah. I mean, it's not like I, you know, I, I put off <laughs> a lot of responsibilities for a lot of time, and like I put off paying off mm-hmm. my student loans for a long time, and that was irresponsible. So sure, um, sure. Yeah. I, I, I'm not. Yeah, well, it's good like, to hear that, you that, say was, that was not the optimal solution. Well, there you go. That's great. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I guys, I know it's off topic, but mm-hmm. I just need to say, so, like, th- that came into my life in real time. This little bundle of joy that just appeared right now. I need to uh-huh. share with you guys here today. This will be in the show notes. Oh, what's just, what's just, this about? J- just, just look and see who you see in this crowd shot of the Smile of Pony episode. Just, just go through and, um, and tell me who you see. I, I see the Breaking Bad guy. Oh I God, see Heisenberg. It's, it's Rick and Morty. Yeah. Wait, this is an oh, edit. This is an edit. there it is. There they are. This there is not are. real. Well, it's I mean, real. they've already done Doctor Who's and sh- I mean, no, you know, look, at, look at look at look at the pixels on Morty's eyebrow. It's oh, real. How do we know this is real? Where's the confirmation? That looks that looks fake to me. I I, I saw it posted somewhere. Oh, is and that Heisenberg? I choose to believe it. Is that Heisenberg in the back? I think so. Probably yeah. disgusting. Uh, okay, but hang on. His cutie mark is a pickle. Like, would Rick's cutie mark really no, no, it's be? A test it's not. It's a test oh, tube. Oh, oh, okay. I my see, my screen is fucked up. Of, yeah, yeah. I see it. Okay, the bottom looked like a pickle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I don't. Look, I don't know. Topic. I can't even speculate. Right, dude. Like Tom. Yeah. Back... Whenever you talk about how people are just like, hey, we, you know, that job we decided to give you, we decided to not give you that job. It reminded me of the inverse of this one window cleaning customer I had, which was like a fucking modern castle, uh, but a house, which is to say a really mm. big house that has lots of stone, like siding and shit. 
And I was just like, damn, mm. this house is amazing. And my dad told me that he had talked with you know the customers and, and like had a con- had a conversation and like f- some way or another how they made all this money came up because these people were fucking young, like mid thirties, maybe early, you know, no, I think like late twenties, and with like like some baby kids, right? So here's what it was: the guy, the husband, the dad, he's like a legal document writer thing or something. Mm-hmm. He like was doing negotiations for a thing regarding a casino, and basically his company had him write up a, a list of terms and agreements. And usually they're gonna like reject half of it, and you're gonna be negotiating for a while. But they just accepted all of their terms. I don't know exactly the cause and effect chain reaction here, but basically it just meant that they all made shit billion do- dollars of money, right? And it's just like, wow, yeah, that's like a total, like, out of nowhere windfall crazy, right? And, like, the mom to- was saying that, like, it's crazy when I'm taking my kids to the grocery store and they basically want everything off the shelf and I don't know what to do because I could buy everything on the shelf, right? <laughs> I'm like, damn, bro. <laughs> damn. Yeah, it's, it's just I like feel when, damned. when fucking... How when, like, YouTubers are all like, I can't believe it. I have 500,000 subscribers. I never thought I'd have that many. Really? You actually got more subscribers than you imagined yourself having? Does anyone ever actually done that? Or am I just... I don't know. You know what I'm talking about, guys? Yeah. Well, I suppose. I'm lost. Yeah, I I am. (laughs) I'm gay. Um... (laughs) I haven't hey. gone through my list. I haven't gone through my list. Yeah, pl- please, please. Uh, l- l- yeah. As I said before, I am post job. The mm. only jobs I have have been like backroom deals, like like no like official salary or you know uh, uh you know uh uh what's the word like regular earnings. You know, I I did not have like a schedule or anything. I would I would just do uh, odd jobs throughout society and and, and mostly commissions on the internet so the I, I i am post what say again it's called the gig economy right yeah, right yeah economy. that's right yeah. that's right I, I i am post job i do not i i i i have i have lived my entire life including now where i i, I guess you could say that the pcp is a job but like it's it's more fluid yeah. it's it's more fluid it's, it's entirely like, like individual like it's it's basically commission based more or less yeah. for everyone including me mm-hmm. yeah so 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 the only jobs like 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 I like if I like the main thing that I've done with my life like the main salary earner I I would say is probably commissions followed by the PCP in in terms of how much I've made. You're well, also a lawnmower, I, ain't you? Well, I I used to. I don't really do that as much anymore. But that, I remember that's you saying, saying that that's how you paid for your flight to Radcon too, if I remember correctly. The, uh, well, it was mostly commissions, but like okay, like, like, no, th- no that's, shade that's, on it. Obviously, I think it's cool. I was just you know just no 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 no. I I, I I know okay. you think it's cool. I, mm-hmm. I I like that's what I say when I mean like do odd jobs through society where I'll just like uh, know okay. a neighbor or someone who mm-hmm. just needs me to do something for them. Uh, this was who just needs to perform some miscellaneous sexual act. I yeah, understood. Yeah, exactly, understood. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't like to do that much anymore because I don't like 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 most of the people who would mm. be that are like not here and like I don't live in a in, in an area that pertains mm-hmm. to. Mm-hmm. I, what I'm saying is I live in a, I live in a shit ghetto place and okay. I don't, I'm not I'm not really in demand anymore. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Uh. So mo- most of it is online stuff. Uh, but but I've I've never like like I I didn't have like a like a summer job or anything. I've never had like you know I need to flip burgers in in, in high school or anything. My mm-hmm. flipping burgers was flipping minds and 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 creating psychological revolutions on this podcast. <laughs> I mean, because you know what's what's I that's definitely true. And it's like I got my first job at Papa Gino's, or you know I worked for like, my neighbor, whatever. Like the first one I think of was Papa Gino's that I did when I was like sixteen and a half or like 17 or something yeah that's like, exactly yeah and that's like that's exactly like when you yeah. were doing like this stuff this online stuff and mowing lawns and you know but more importantly like the, the commission so like you totally 
just like your generation in general, at least like the artists uh, out there now have like the ability to do this like online commission work when guys like, you know, my generation was the transitional one where we were going I, toward this, but everybody I, still got like shitty meme jobs. Out in the I world. know that's, yeah. that's what I'm trying to hammer home. We are yeah, post yeah. job. We have evolved past the need for jobs. We can just do like, 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 mm-hmm. like, like young arts can just do commission work and, 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 and they can get fucking mad dosh by mad dosh. I mean, barely more. Barely Really than any like, money. And then, like, a quarter of what you need to live. Well, do, you know, this is the fascinating thing, though. Like, maybe... I, I'm not really sure it's a quote-unquote good thing uh, it, for, for, like, the people... Specific, for, for, I guess just, for, like, for the, the worker class of society mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. things are going this way. Because things used to be much more cushy and, like, comfortable, and you didn't really need to worry about it. And, like, the economy has just gotten so much more demanding i guess you have to have like two parents working to support a family and stuff yeah, like yeah. I, i'm not saying it's just like I, there's nothing to, to be to be done except rise to the challenge obviously yeah. but i'm just saying that like people really seem to be like lowering their standards across the board and maybe out of necessity like i, I don't i don't know if it's just you know not not everyone's a ben out here uh mm-hmm. it's just you know like i i was reading like something recently about how like or you know what it was? It was that article that came out pretty recently about how like your average YouTuber is like barely escaping poverty. Like I mean, not your average YouTuber, like your your successful mainstream YouTuber. Like I don't know, like your your uh, Super Bunny Hops maybe, or you know, one of the, one of those tier of guys. Like those guys like are barely making what like. <laughs> Uh, you know, like a livable minimum class wage or minimum class, <laughs> middle class wage. Uh, and there's just like, w- like, where's the growth opportunity here? Like there is some if you become like a media mogul or something and you really like take the Internet by storm. If you, you know, you're a fucking PewDiePie or you're, you know, like the Young Turks have a huge network of stuff. But like, man, it's it's tough out there in the, in the commission world of being an artiste on the Internet. It, it, it is tough out there. But I think what you lose in in, in like wealth and and mm-hmm. and money, you mm-hmm. make up for in time doing what you like. That's and, valuable. And, 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 and this is the most like, valuable like, thing. That is the yeah. highest good that there is. Agrees. Oh, the, the, right, I, right. I, I I I'm sort of on board because like, what mm-hmm. do you want to do with the money? Do things that you want to do. Right. Yeah, and if, that's right. And if you're yeah. doing what you want to do, then I, I I I've said this time and time again where I don't particularly want to be super rich or anything. I just want to be able to do what I want to do, which is just to draw forever. Mm-hmm. And so as long as I'm mm-hmm. not dead and I'm drawing forever, that's ideal for yeah, me. Munchie, yeah, Munchie, what you're tapping into is the fact that we're in this transitionary period. Like, hypothetically, well, it won't be that long before robots actually do actually everything. Like, they could even make novels better than people could, and at that point, we're just crossing our fingers that we continue to be the masters of this planetary domain. That will be the final mm-hmm. issue. But at that point, you know, we won't even have money. I mean, I don't know. This is this is really high-minded shit. But, like, we're sort of moving into an area <laughs> where, like, if everything is automated, hypothetically, then you don't even need to pay money for anything because everything is automated, right? So yeah. we're sort of yeah. hypothetically transitioning away from a, a life, from a world where money is even relevant. And the transitionary side effects is it feels like we're fucking up and failing because we're making less money. But, like, money is becoming less relevant. You know, like, think about yeah, how much Yeah, that's kind of money, the awkward transitional Like, if, you're, if we're talking, pains. like, the baby boomer era, we're talking about, like, the 60s and 70s. We're thinking about, like, it's all about making lots of money and spending that money to have a good life. But nowadays, yep. you can sort of have a lot of the same things for a lot less money. How much money did you have to spend back in the 70s to have a level of entertainment that you can now have with Netflix, you know? Yeah, yeah. In- infinitely more, obviously. Of so... Course. Like, I feel like we've sort of developed our lives, uh, like, the capitalism develops in our in our minds this idea of, like, this fucking MMO that we're all playing, where, like, the score that you judge yourself by is, is your point, which is to say your money, right? But there are other ways to feel valuable, and, yeah, I think that... Or like your KD ratio or something. Right, you so... You focus on other statistics. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's. We, we need to gamify real life. The only problem is I don't trust anyone to make a, a system where like you allocate points for the right things because you're just gonna get a bunch of like spawn camping pieces of shit who just that's, you know. That's endless war. Endless war is the gamification <laughs> of real life. That's yeah, he's right. That's All we need right. is it's... to make endless war real, aka incite <laughs> gang violence across all the major <laughs> cities in the United States of America, we and then we'll irradi- have our we, ideal society. Uh, we have to irradiate the seas and turn it all to slime. <laughs> we need to. Flood the 
Grand Canyon with slime to make that slime river flow. Yes. <laughs> And the violence no. should follow naturally from there. <laughs> That's true, but also forbidden. Uh, <laughs> okay. Deleted. Uh, I, 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 I've been having doubts myself mm-hmm. about about how uh, the the upward momentum of internet content creation and and, and yeah. how it will yeah. be good for like like me personally. And sure. I and I've, I've been I've been thinking about you know I like I really admire and I and I respect the the, the security that you have Nate of mm-hmm. you know just doing you know, a job having that safety net and also doing what you love you know mm-hmm. make, making making mm-hmm. videos and stuff and I have not fully formulated and and you know, hard set my opinion I used to be super into like you know obviously content creation is just the way for me it, it it aligns with all of my beliefs and like what I want to do and it will allow me to do what I want but. The, the more I think about it, the more I think, well, you know, like, like having more money will be having more money, and I will be able to do more of what I want. Y- you know what I'm saying. If I'm yeah, if I yeah. more wealthy, I will be able to go it, and uh, go more places and do more things, it, it which will tie back into gold. my heart. Yeah. It, I mean, yeah. does that's, serve the goal of, of mm-hmm. you know, freedom. It, yeah, it gives you the freedom. You just it, it is important to balance your uh, your time that you dedicate to this thing to give you the safety net so you can do the fun things that you really are passionate about versus, you know, or you know, about those two things, making sure that they don't one doesn't consume the other. And, you know, like you have to be pragmatic. Like if you can't pay your rent unless you spend, you know, 12 hours a day at a normie job, uh, or, you know, cuz you you're do. That then you have to do that, or else you'll just die, and then you won't get to spend any time doing the fun stuff. So you know, you gotta be pragmatic about the stuff. But uh, yeah, that's that's the most important thing I'd want people to take away. I think that's really important. If you can make it work full time doing the thing you want to do, fantastic. I recommend you do so immediately. But uh, you know, being aware of where future trends are going, and I mean, these days there's a lot of there's a lot of cracking down on uh, Look, some of the more out the there. The only future trend that matters stuff. is your trend into the fucking grave. So there's no time. There's no <laughs> Which time. Which is 100 percent. There's there's no yet. time to be like, oh, I wonder if, if if I should like wait or not. No, just fucking do your shit because time's the most important Ooh. thing. Money's stupid. Just fucking. Waiting, right. waiting in general is almost always a mistake, but it's important to take smart action. So, like, it just like, like, there's this guy, like Uncle Adams. I know, I think I talked about it before, but that yeah. guy just said, like, "Fuck it, I'm going to spend whatever amount of money it takes, work full time on being a musician, and I will drive myself into the fucking ground until I get there." Like, in my personal opinion, he is a little bit naive about his chances, and I think a much smarter move would be to like get a job, work on your music in the side, and because frankly, his music is like, isn't that great? Like, what if you never get good? and you never get the money back like which will happen to most people who try probably <clears throat> uh you know worrisome so <coughs> have a job you have um, a motivational yeah. cracked.com article talking about success mm. and like it's point number six to be successful or to get anywhere in life you have to start now which is a pretty basic yes. sentiment but my favorite my favorite sentence on probably anything cracks ever written was i would come home every day I would, I would be at work all day not liking my job, thinking about all the things I'd like to do, writing my novels and shit. But then I'd get home mm-hmm. and then file the rest of my time under the fuck this day folder and then yeah, just get yeah. ready to do it all again tomorrow. That's what people do. That's what people do. It's really easy to do that. I did that for a long time myself. I always – I did that my a lot of my life and hated myself intensely for it. Yep. Uh, and I was just so delighted to look back one day after I'd gone through doing all this TBAP and, you know, best guy ever and PCP stuff. And now I'm just like – I'm so happy every day I'm, when I realize I'm not that guy anymore. I'm like still that 50% of the time. It's like a coin toss oh, yeah. whether I'll actually like burn a day or not. Well, sucks. don't get me wrong. Yesterday, I should have been working on finishing all the uh, the paperwork for um, like who, who gets what for the for the Radcon event. Instead, I played Stardew Valley. So you know, well, not every shit. day. Fuck, fuck not you. Every you have day. a lot. I have a lot of like, money riding on that. So <laughs> I, feel free to criticize me, everybody. That's totally fair. But I'm working on it. I'm, by the yeah. time you hear this, it'll be done. So I will, I will don't worry say about it. that like I have figured out. I have cured myself of the most base form of procrastination but there's other forms mm-hmm. I can crop oh, up. He has to leave the podcast now. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm supposed to be working on a, the next Digi video right now and I'm kind of doing mm-hmm. it but I was also kind of just 
working on selecting dozens of different colors for mannequins in a level in a video game. And I'm like, I don't want to make the video. I want to make more colors for my mannequins. So I'm like, oh. Um, anyway, the point is... Devu. What's up? Well, it, it will continue. Continue. I'll, I'll do it after you. Yeah, so I tend to procrastinate by doing something else, but isn't the thing I'm A lot of people do doing. that as a way yeah. to trick themselves into thinking they're doing what they should be doing. I know, Like, right? for example, when it's time to do your taxes, I will, like, clean my room because one is, like, less objectionable oh, than the other. Exactly. You know, we do that kind of stuff. Don't fall for that trap, people. You got to be know, aware right? of that stuff. Yeah. You got to be like, aware. Um, so, like, here's the thing about all these motivational speeches that you've been cutting, Nate. It's like, I give mm-hmm. all these... I mean, you're better. You're a better hype man than me, so I guess this is the difference. But all these people in my life mm-hmm. who I've known, who have, who still struggle with the same problems I had before I started working hard, and I just feel like none of my motivational fucking speeches like help them at all. Like for me, I look That's back true. at myself, yeah. and it was just all it took was I had I was forced to start doing a full time job, and then like nine months later, it was literally just something in me snapped. And I just yeah, yeah. didn't stop working ever. And I don't know, maybe it's just not everyone is cut out for this. Maybe some people ultimately don't mind having a stupid job that much. They just think that all oh, these cool internet people are cool. So I want to be like mm-hmm. that. It's like, you know, I think it might only be for you if not being that is literal psychological torture. Yeah. You know, as as the world famous show Grounded for Life once eloquently put it, somebody's got to make the sandwiches. Yes. and uh, that's a perfectly reasonable thing Except to say. The robots, it, when the robots make the sandwiches, there is a there is I don't an really, AI burger flipper. Now. I don't really put a lot of stock personally in like willpower or like people's like inner strength coming out. I really think yeah. you're just either predisposed to hear a certain message and then like do stuff, or you won't be. So yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah, I just think like some people will just get that. But but what I will say is, though, like because I am a guy who cares about this kind of stuff, I think that the more messages that are out there, the the higher likelihood that someone might hear it and then be inspired to do these sorts yeah. of things, which I would argue is a good thing. Motivational so, oh speeches God. didn't yeah. work on me, but they might work on someone else. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I okay. This Hopefully. is slightly off topic, but I but there mm-hmm. needs to be a topic about self help. Uh, culture slash like spirituality because my hmm. mom my hmm. mom is so hopped up on like feeling the good vibrations and like god is within you shit. and like self-help and like trying to like like uh, like like do all these like weird like bell and whistles like like fucking fake snake oil bullshit in order hmm. to milk make herself feel better after coming home from work instead of just trying like to do normal like i'm going to take a walk or i'm going to exercise <laughs> see i, I that stuff to, that like, stuff comes off work. That stuff yeah. comes off as so like uh, I don't know like not not pedantic Cloying. like like you're talking down to to people and like it's just so like self masturbatory and mm-hmm. like not actually fixing the problem. That's why I always do and I always go for like the black pilled uh, like self help. Like listen, literally no one cares about your life. You are worthless mm-hmm. in the eyes of everyone else. Mm-hmm. Only you can like fix your shit. So. Listen, do you want a shitty life? Do you want to be sad forever? You know, if, if that's the situation you're in. Uh, if the answer's no, literally no one else will help you. You have to do it yourself. That's the kind of message that I respond to, at least. And so, I, I, I don't know, it I, seems I, more I, sincere. Whenever I fucking get in my mom's mm-hmm. car and, and <laughs> we go anywhere, <laughs> she always is playing some fucking bullshit like someone lying through their fucking teeth making mm-hmm. mad dosh praying on fucking naive like like to- like 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 mentally exhausted middle-aged single moms sure it was like he like like he, self-help like how to be happy in 10 steps oh. here's what you do or like fucking, a thousand steps and it's all fucking not like it's all like like nebulous fucking right. not actually like practical like not actually like just take these steps it's all fucking bullshit Number right. one, remember to love yourself. Oh that's my the most, god, yeah, that's right, it! Right? That's the shit. Yeah. What I this mean, is, and when you not, with the self help stuff. It's not like you shouldn't do that. No, right. of course not. That, of course yeah. not. I know, yeah, no, just, I, I, you, I can quantify the issue with this mentality that all these, that mm-hmm. so many people have, that it, it's a focus on the methods and not a focus on the results. You see, the thing about all those books for helping you with any walk in life, whether it be money or mm. confidence or sex, they, they spend so much time complicating the procedures 
and like adding more and more things to remember and you would just spend more and more time thinking about all the improvements you can do then it distracts you from the fact that it's actually it's pretty easy to know whether or not things are changing you just look and see the results you know, yeah. like, mm-hmm. like, you just got to like, be honest about your situation. Bo- books to like get you laid with women, you know, that they, I feel like they kind of distract you from a very simple, a very simple test. Are you getting laid or not? Right. All you got to do is just keep examining that fact and then change your behavior accordingly. You know, a a great way I look a great example of this, I think, is like like working out and like being in the gym. The working out is the ultimate example of that. Like you could read it it is it is perfect for this, because if you aren't tracking your numbers and your reps and your like if you're you're smart, you should measure like your waist size. If you're trying to lose weight and, you know, track your weight like Mm -hmm. you should be writing it all down. If you're not, you're fucking up right off the gate. But most people, I think, do who are serious about this by doing that. You have uncontroversial, like 100 percent factual results right in front of you every time you go in so you know if you're doing it right and if you're not progressing you are doing something wrong I, and it's just up to you if you're gonna right, fix or not people, or if you just don't care i know oh, I, I, i've seen like fitness videos about this being like you can spend mm-hmm. forever researching fitness and never like yeah. dipping your fucking toes into it uh get yourself addicted to the feeling of actually having accomplished something you know, that's the way. Be, that's be, the way. Yeah. Exercise is good for you and will make you feel good. Go back and, to one, yeah. like, like watch watery yeah. advice. Watch it just watery takes, advice. It just takes effort. It takes more effort than not doing it. So the default is to not do it, of course. For, for uh, you know. I, 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 I just realized a, a way I can describe what's happening here. Hmm. These these books want to say that it's all mental like it's all in your head the reason why why your life sucks and you're and you feel bad because you don't do anything it's all mental Mm -hmm. it's not about your physical habits that you do it's not about what you do with your life and like who you hang out with or the way that you spend your time it's all just like like just like readjust how like like it's it's like just think about you know when you put in your your debit card to pay for something and it makes the eh, 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 noise just think about like an 8-bit video game just make about like an 8-bit video game. Yeah, Munchie, and it'll all I can be see right. that seems like that mentality is a little bit liberating, but really it's binding. It's basically putting exactly. all misfortune onto you. Like it's all mm-hmm. within you. Nothing about your environment is limiting you. And you I see, that's think- where like like s- s- someone might be tempted to like really gravitate to that because it allows them to like quote unquote like be responsible for everything. Right. But, but it makes that's your, not it makes actually your workload the case. impossible. It makes your challenge un- insurmountable in some cases. Yeah. It, well, it just it's just you're not fully assessing the problem because like just for example, if you want to lose weight and like your whole family is fat and right. all your friends are fat, like the. Like, yes, you could theoretically just completely change your habits, but realistically, we have to recognize we are weak, impressionable, foolish creatures, and the best thing to do is start hanging around people who eat the way you want to eat and who right. exercise and to get friends like that, you know? Mm, that's the yeah. that's that's a I, huge yeah, change way to help. environment, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm just saying, and, and not to share my mom, because she's a great lady and I, and I mm-hmm. like her, but, like, she'll re- she'll listen to all of these books, and the, and she's listened to, like, like, un, like unbelievable, like, like, hundreds of books. And has it given that, her a single extra number no, in her KD ratio? Has yeah, it increased yeah. at all? <laughs> Ex- exactly, exactly. Because cause, cause she'll just do, like, like, she'll just try and, like, think about the world differently but she doesn't do anything differently she still mm-hmm. does the exact same things that she's always done for years this munchie's point. mom she, is the ultimate nemesis exactly. of the pcp she, she is our she, arch she's rival antithesis of nate. <laughs> if, 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 if nate were to encounter her as like, like a child he would have smothered her like, it, it, like, like it is well listen no i got question. a lot of respect is, for for people who raise a kid but but you know still we can still make criticism it is, totally it is fair. easy to fall into the trap of like listening to and like indulging in things that like tell you that like tell you how to feel better that like mm-hmm. that like that like tell you how to think you know what yeah. i mean yeah. like 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 it's easy to fall down the self-help rabbit hole Mm-hmm. And and mm-hmm. think and but, think that it is doing something for you. Right. Even listening to this podcast, fair viewer, you may be pushing off responsibilities. Maybe you should be applying for that job you want right now instead of listening to this what's podcast one, uh, about jobs for a bunch one, uh, of assholes who don't know shit. Like one is quote from uh, Welcome to the NHK that Digi always fucking quotes, where the guy says, mm. "I have uh, yes. read all the self help books. I could write." a self-help book just based on my knowledge of all the other self-help books 
and none yep. of it has helped me. Yeah, but like yeah, to, to jump back to what you said about meat. um about uh you know getting yourself into an environment of say people who eat right or eat the way you want to eat. Mm-hmm. I guess one thing to keep in mind is that we here on YouTube telling people about getting success on YouTube, we exist in this void without considering any of the other values and variables or things that you want to have or maintain in your life, i.e., if the people, if all the fat fucks, if all the fucking grease-slurping slobs in your <laughs> life are people who matter to you, maybe that's mm-hmm. simply your fate. If you can't turn your, if you can't turn your fucking mm. vegan, there's no such thing as fate. Fucking bean burger nose away from them, then maybe not your fate, but ultimately maybe you should give up. You should give up the bacon of giving up bacon, right? Well, it's it's just you're making a calculation that you know your proximity to these people is more important to you than whatever right. the goal is, it's and you easy. can do that. A lot actually, of people do that. It's actually pretty psychologically easy for me in like 2012 to decide I should start working on YouTube or game design stuff because mm-hmm. I had nothing else going on in my life, right? Yeah. I had like yeah. two friends who I would see once a week and that's all I had to live for. I had nothing to lose, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas if so you were, were like, liberated in a way. If you're someone who has anything to lose, it becomes much more difficult. Like my first experience with actually having to make a hard decision was deciding how much effort I should put into my channel versus the Digibro channel. That was the first time I ever had an actual fucking trade-off. So just keep that in mind, folks, that a lot of people are held back. Like you might be held back by other things you already have in your life, you know? And don't let our single-minded explanations of how to fucking get YouTube success like dictate your decisions because you have your my, own my entire approach to here. I I want people to insert whatever thing it is that they care about into the slot of like just for example like if you want to lose weight or something surround yourself with like minded people you know whatever it is you're interested in or that you have passion for pursue it with as much gusto as you can muster right. muster like if if doing Did, yeah if doing an actual job like being a dentist or some shit interests you like genuinely interests you and like doing painting or some art thing doesn't interest you to a significant degree stronger i don't think there's any reason to do that like the only reason i do art is because there's nothing else i am interested in doing so it's actually a very easy decision for me Sure. Devu, yeah, yeah. What are you gonna do when Digi bleeds all of his money for making an avant-garde content that no one understands or wants? <laughs> what are you gonna do when he bleeds all his money? Away? Fair, fair question. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, right Uh-oh. now I'm working on going on Google <laughs> Row and downloading shitloads of porn that's related to the video, and gonna have to figure out how to censor that. Yeah. Ooh. What uh, are you gonna do when he bleeds away all of his money? I don't know. Do you- Make. Uh, he- Fucking... He's gonna get a job. There we go. Oh, We're back on top. Yeah. There we go. Bringing it back. No, I'm working, on, I'm working on video games. Something even more financial. Uh, okay, Devu. Quick question. Quick question, Devu. Here's a real. Okay, how much money have you invested in making this game, and how much have you seen on returns? Uh, maybe both are. Maybe both are zero. Maybe both. I am are wealthy. I returns, am wealthy like, beyond well, belief. I, I mean, in that's my, my soul. point. It, it's, it's you know what? I think zero, it's so bullshit that everyone now you guys are jumping on this whole uh-huh. like oh. You're in a Patreon that someone else's Patreon is. Y'all are all living I, your lives. No, 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 no. I'm asking, dude. I'm no, not giving you shit. No, Davu. D- 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 I'm uh, the fact that you were doing this for Digi is not a problem at all. The fact is that Digi is bleeding money and dying. Well, it, it, exactly as I would say for anyone who works for a corporation, like you should be aware of if that corporation is like currently going through bankruptcy proceedings. Just like my friend Digi. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm, that's not. That's not. But like theoretically, let's just say Digi dies. I mean, you never know. I, like just. What if he dies, you know? And I'm just saying anyone in any situation should be aware of the realities of how things could change and have a backup plan. That's all I'm saying. Right. The, the I'm reality saying. I want to live in is where where, where Devu becomes unshackled exclamation point Devu. And well, I will say, I will say, I deeply, I it. deeply miss Devu's videos. I would love those back. Yeah, I forgot. That would be I nice. I forgot Devu used to make videos. In a perfect world, in a perfect world. Uh, but, hold on. you know, hey, man. Okay, Digi's Patreon did decrease over the winter by a huge margin. I've actually continued to get paid the same amount of money. Like, Digi also okay. makes lots of money from AdRev that he just keeps for sure, himself. Sure. So I've actually been continued to be paid the same amount of money. 
So I, I'm not actually trying. I don't want to criticize you. You don't need to get into it if you don't want to. I'm not trying to yeah. like examine your financial situation. Uh, you, you know, if you don't want to, that's perfectly, perfectly I mean, fine. M I mean, Munchie started this, Munchie. What I definitely the hell? do need why? more money. I mean, that is actually why I'm on the PCP right now. I decided yeah. I'm just going sure, to sure. fucking bite the bullet and be on this show where we go completely off topic and I'm <laughs> as bad as anyone else at that uh, because I will make a bit of money mm -hmm. and I do need that money. Uh, so there you go. Glad to know yeah. where your priorities are. The barrels was to your head. You just had to pull that trigger and he's but done it at last. Thank just, God. Like talking about what we said earlier about the irrelevance of money in the face of like just being happy actually i basically yeah. already have that like i felt like i fucking broke through the heavens of actually becoming someone who makes stuff that people find relevant and useful to them that's really yeah. hard to accomplish you know to like actually be someone who can make things that people give a shit that's really hard mm -hmm. to do so once i accomplished that i basically felt like i've been set for life you know well, what I mean? Now that we've found the gold mine that is water park vlogs, there's no going back. Yeah. We've cracked, we've opened Pandora's <laughs> box. This is a bubble that will never burst. There's two, there's two major forms of currency in 2018 yeah. going forward. There was two major sources of income across the world. Water park vlogs and endless war. These are the two <laughs> driving forces of the economy. Everything what if we depends on them? them. What if there was gang violence <laughs> at Disneyland? Oh, Christ. It'll be a slime uh, park. Instead of a water park. <laughs> oh my god, that would be. Inc we have to make that. We have to. We have yeah, to build. We have yeah, to we have that. to build a new room. We have to build a new room in Endless War. The slime. The park. slime park. Welcome oh. to slime park. Oh, for maybe all you your can. Maybe you can pay. You can like pay a little bit of slime to like go on one of the rides or something. Oh, you have to. You have to pay for admission. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. Bin. No. Okay. Okay. You do like 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 exclamation point ride name of ride and and then like like and then you and then you pay amount of slime and then we have like six or seven like 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 uh, uh text walls that we will type out describing your experience with the ride. Oh. Oh. And, and, just, and here's, we'll here's a quick thought. Yeah. Both both Ben and Munchie can make competing rides at the Slime Water Park, and of course, whoever makes the better ride will get the more money because they get paid for the experience. Oh my god! Oh my right? god! Like, right? like, like we're like tycoons. Like we exactly. like we start this competing. business. We're like you're roller just... coaster tycoons in real life. Oh. <laughs> and, 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 and it'll be a race to see who can make more rides and like who can make more like designs for rides. It'll we're be like, yeah. like more. We're like running. Then, like, we're like running make, like, this water park text. racket yeah. in the background. <laughs> we're just like making <laughs> slime hand the, over the, fists. You, you know how. There's like 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 in normal amusement park. There's always like okay, who who can make the biggest roller coaster? We can like who has like the biggest wall of text describing this person's experience. Yeah, with the exactly. Roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> All uh, right, endless, well, endless war has infinite growth potential. There we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Straight from the mines to the water parks to right. the tycoons. Yeah. We okay. gotta close this PCP because we have to do right. work on endless war right the fuck. We gotta now. get yeah. to the questions. To the questions. Oh, let's God. let's shift over. Does anyone want to make any final points on jobs? Jobs we... suck. I hate them. That's fair, yeah, correct. Same. Uh, I am right. post jobs. Me and my me and my fellow tw uh, two thousand uh, millennial children are all post job. Hashtag post job. All you indigo and, uh, children. We, yeah, all, we, we have no need for for your all you, for your dirt all you fucking white hashtag rat post shit. your jobs because we're poor because the robots have taken over and oh, we're the I ones that lived long enough point. to see it happen. About jobs, because um, you know the other thing mm -hmm. that's appetizing about this kind of job is that you're your own boss. You know you don't have to fucking yeah. call in all the time. Uh, but but just remember, people who want to have a job where they're their own boss, you really do have to be your own boss, and you might end up hating yourself as your own boss. And people that's me. Blame... Okay, I can talk you know, about this. <laughs> you know how like you get you blame your boss for making you go to work, even though going to work is like a, like what you're supposed to do with a job. If you force yourself to do your job, you might have people blaming you for working. Like, you can't... It might even be you. You might have contempt for yourself for forcing yourself to work. And if you can't have that, then you probably cannot be your own boss. Makes sense to me. I mean, dude, it's fucking, it's fucking hard. Like, every, every success you get to revel in, but every failure, you have to realize it was totally your fault, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. So... Like, it sucks realizing that, oh, I only make 10% of the money I used to, and that's my fault, so hooray. Yeah. Uh, well, there you go. All right, let's 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 get some questions. Jobs are gay! Jobs, jobs are gay! Cool. Uh, question time. Job. 
Uh, here, here we go. Here we go. Uh, here is, is, is a pity question over on the Twitter, hashtag AskBCP. Follow us at TBCrastinators. Uh, here, here we go. Uh, Eskimo Bob 2 asks, <laughs> do any of you give to charities? Why or why not? No. Anybody? Does anybody I, here? No, because I, I'm I, a charity I, at this point. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, well. I, I, I don't give to charities simply because I don't have the money to. Mm-hmm. I don't think I don't think charities are, like, evil or anything. I, I get the impression that people are in the chat are going to be like, come down, like, oh, fucking idiot, don't you all know that charities are evil well, and insane? Well, but I don't, I don't really I'm sure care. Nate's going to throw some weird utilitarianism. But no, I, I would donate to charity if I had the money to do so, so as so, long as okay, I believe that, in the cause. Yeah, I, I if don't, you don't have I enough don't, money, that's an excuse. Like, I, if you did have the money, you would, is what Munchie and Tom are saying here. I well, don't okay. really trust I, charities, but it's it's yeah. not even in the equation. It's it's not even a question because I'm you know because like I'm in debt and stuff, and like I can't sure. be I can't be doing that with like that's not what I'm gonna do with money if I get it. I, like, I don't I, know if, it, if it's a hard yes, I would give to charity, but I don't. Okay. It's it's not off the table for me in any way. If I, it just was yeah. a charity that I trusted, then maybe I don't. I, know. I I could make excuses personally all day about like, oh, my finances aren't in as good a shape as I would like before it be to me to start giving money. But I'll tell you right now, philosophically, I dislike charities. Not across the board, but, like, the idea that I could give money to a charity and, like, any of that money gets absorbed in, like, administrative costs. I, I do just and who like knows that. who knows what percentage that is. I, okay, well, I, again, there, I mean, exactly as Ben be, said. There has to be some mechanism. Like, there has to be some yeah. red tape there for, like, anything to get done. Like, okay, I, I know, again, like, I'm a little biased here, but, like, I think about, like, the fucking, the pink ribbons the NFL players wear, like, the pink shoes, or, like, the, it's, like, breast cancer awareness, and, like, of course, we all want to fight breast cancer, it's evil, let's kill it, but the if you look into the finances, like, less than, like, 10% of the revenue from that shit goes to the goddamn charity, and fucking Nike keeps the rest, and the fucking right. NFL gets their cut, of course. Yeah, no, I, like, I, it I, sickens me. I think of uh, charities as sort of, like, a modern-day, what was it, like, Catholic Church, uh, where you just give yeah. the Catholic Church money in order to get into heaven for free. I think of charities sure. as basically, like, well, even if the money didn't Socially, actually, that's what they are. If, even if the money didn't actually go to a good cause, I intended for it to be a good cause, therefore it's a good thing to do i'll tell you what if i had lots of money like mm-hmm. millions of dollars billion if i had fucking you know notch money i would be like notch but way stronger like i would just pay people to do art all the time way stronger like i would nobody's like, stronger than notch if i had a billion dollars i would go yeah. on youtube look at all the people who obviously want to have full-time jobs doing yeah. their videos and i'd be like yo close your patreon that has a sad like seven dollars a month on it i will pay you a full-time wage to make this on a contract basis right that's what i would do you know that's nice because i believe in art i don't believe in disease-free third world nations leave that shit Mm -hmm. to bill gates you see that's the thing the only way the fallacy of spending money is that it doesn't necessarily get you exactly what you want you can Spend a billion dollars to have something happen, but if you're not there making sure the money's being spent correctly, it doesn't make shit. Right. That's why the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation does do legitimate good in the world. Because yeah, it's like yeah. Bill Gates' full-time fucking job. It doesn't just take all of his money, it takes all of his fucking time. And and if Bill Gates didn't do it, he would be considered, like, evil by the world just by virtue of having that money. So he gets something out of it personally, too. But I just assume that if he had spent the same amount of money on charity, but just threw the money to, like, the most honest, earnest-sounding bidder, you wouldn't vaccinate shit. Well, yeah. Agreed. Uh, probably. It's like, that's that's my point. Like, okay, okay, when I think about, like... It, like, yeah, exactly as you were saying, Davu, there's, like, people out there who just aren't making enough money doing what they want to do. And, you know, I have a little bit of conflicting feelings because I think to myself, like, okay, I value what this person's doing. But if they're so <coughs> unpopular that, like, they haven't been able to, like, capitalize on this and, like, make it a successful business. Like, I know not everyone's a great businessman. But, like, right. will this even succeed long term if I subsidize right. it? Well, so there's, me, like, concerns again, it's, about it's that. It's not about me. But, it's not about trying to yeah. – push stuff out the boat that is going to be successful. It's about me wanting certain art to exist. Um, Okay, Okay, sure. I remember there was this documentary. I only have seen the commercials. I'll just relay the commercials information about the guy who made Mm -hmm. five-hour energy. He became a goddamn billionaire and spent 99% of it on just charity and fucking, uh, like, uh, 
philanthropy. He basically built this huge fucking like science lab where he just gives scientists and engineers free money to build cool shit that can help the poor, like a a hand cranked water filtration bitch type of thing, right? Like, Word. so basically he spends his money on very specific things that can very specifically help people in specific ways. Like when um, James Rolfe recently, like a couple years back, did a charity where he was auctioning off some old AVGN set pieces or like scripts and the money was going to charity. But it was very specifically going to the hospital, this like, this like specialty hospital that like saved his daughter's life, right? Mm-hmm. Well, sure, like, okay. Basically, like, his daughter wasn't treated properly when she was born, so he took her to this other medical specialty place, and they, like, basically uh, uh, resulted in his daughter not being, like, permanently disabled because they knew what the fuck they were doing, right? So James Rolfe was like, all right, if I ever do a charity, it's going to be these guys, right? Because they're very specific people who I actually know, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that that's well, my thing about cool. why I think it's bad to like not bad, but I think it's misguided to think that if you have money, you must give to charity because yes, you could have a million times more money than someone else, but we all only have twenty four hours in the day, mm-hmm. and doing good takes time, not money. I mean, it takes, takes you know, money. and that's very true. And I, I like I can make another argument here that like okay, who's gonna do more with the money for the world? Like some. Like Elon Musk or like some yeah. poor kid in Chicago, like right. I, you know, maybe that kid is like a super genius and like he'll use that money and like get somewhere in life and go really far. But we've got a track record with Elon; he's doing good work over here with <laughs> yeah. all his money. I don't, I don't know if I necessarily agree with the sentimentality of we just have to like put all of our resources into like like the the, the rich and powerful and and geniuses. Well, <laughs> I mean, in this particular case, it's an argument to like take Elon's money to give to like poor people, which of course I am not in favor of. Uh, sure, but, but yeah, I, 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 I it, again, it comes down to the individual decision of, of just I like poor black kids in Chicago. Let me give them money. If well, I, I like want everybody. To, if, if I just choose to. Wait. If there was infinite money and infinite resources, of course we'd want everybody to have it. Uh, it's just a matter. It's a matter of you know distribution. Um, I don't think. I don't think it like like like. I don't think it needs to be a matter of 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 moral ambiguity to just do to just give money to who you want to give money to when and if. And no, I, well, if I, you choose to do so. I, I right. disagree. I, to, I mean, to certain degrees. Because, like, if I give so much... Well, just, like, there can be cases where, like, if I give so much money that I personally... Let's just say I give so much money that I starve to death because I can't buy money for myself. Just as an right. edge case. Obviously, that is that is not ideal. You don't want to go that far. That's too much. Even if the people that you're giving money to survive only because you gave money and maybe more people survive than you die the question is what will they do with their lives we have to make these calculations now because we're dealing with these sort of like that's that's what we're talking about we're, we're trafficking in direct human life at this point the, the, the human the trafficking and what they'll do with their lives is i'm a human trafficker will, <laughs> is that they will be happy uh correct correct but uh, and, that, and and that's what people want is for other people. To I be have happy. now completely forgotten. I just charity. now remembered this is a question. This isn't just a continuation of the topic. That that yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's just do any of you give to charities? Why why not? I'll, I'll make one last point in favor of Munchie basically in this point, which is just like if I could for if you think about for example like. In the middle, in the Middle Ages, like there were probably like super genius kids born to just like dirt poor surf families, and like they obviously had like no opportunity to like succeed, and were just like trampled and you know died, never getting a chance to succeed. I want all those people to have an opportunity to succeed across but the world. It's too fucking so like, late. yeah, where where, chari- where charity can do those sorts of things, I absolutely want it to do so. Though I don't believe in like extracting money from people I, if they don't I, choose I, to. I don't. When this when this person said like would you give yeah. to charity I I don't like believe in like really like huge big charities or anything I just want to mm-hmm. like I- analyze like just giving two things that I feel deserve money and slash or attention yeah. I, I don't have any particular like uh, standards or or, or or beliefs like that I want to give to that I can like think of right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like there's no charity that I that I am like itching to give money to. I'm just yeah. saying, like, like the idea of giving money to other people does not repulse me. I, it doesn't repulse me either. It just depends on the like. Sometimes it does repulse me. Other times mm-hmm. it doesn't. You know. Yeah. 
Sometimes so, it repulses me too. Yeah. There you go. Uh, there you go. We don't. Anyone else want to weigh on this? If, no. Tom, no. would you give? Oh, Tom is the charity case, right? I forgot. I forgot. Ben, Ben, what do you think? Just real quick. Uh, if I had like more money than I knew what to do with, then maybe. But like, I'd have to be really. I'd have to like really mm-hmm. not know like what the money was going to. Yeah. yeah, like yeah. I like I would just have to be thoroughly convinced that the money was actually making a, a real difference and not, mm-hmm. you know, that's it. Makes that's sense my to condition. me. Uh, uh, yeah. one other uh, Twitter question here from at Doombox Two favorite anime. Okay, moving on. We're going to the uh, <laughs> to the piece to the patron lounge questions I, over here. This is why we have bad comments is because you read them aloud and they it's think funny. they're really funny. That one is funny. It was a joke comment. God damn it. All right. We've it, had that joke comment like four I times. I like every it episode. every time. <laughs> Alright, all right. here's an actual here, here, good question. Like, yeah, here, an actual good like question it. here. Discount yeah. Gumshoe asks, this is a great question for this topic. I, I told everybody that we're doing the jobs topic. Uh, okay. Will the Chad artist, or just, you know, or will the artist ever be free of the you don't work hard meme that the virgin wage cucks have forced upon us? <laughs> you, you, you understand what he's asking here? Like, no. so, yes. so often, so often you'll be like an no. online content creator, like a video maker or like a, a draw boy. And you'll say, like, they'll, you know, you'll meet someone out and they'll be like, hey, what do you do? Uh, it's like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a YouTuber. I'm, a, I'm an artist. No. You know, I do commissions. And they're like, oh, they, now what about a real job, though? What, what's your real oh, job? It'll, you know? it'll never be free because mm-hmm. inherently being an artist means that what you that you're doing what you you're, you're, you're choosing your own work. And it's just, I think it's just inherently less punishing, and it's just mm-hmm. it's going to be seen by those who have to do stuff they it, don't want to do for a living. You, you know what it's the It's going to be seen is here. that way no matter what. And I don't even blame it. Like, I think that's kind of reasonable. Hmm. I, the, like, I don't hmm. think what the, the work of an artist here. and the work of a wage cuck is even comparable. Yeah, v- v- a little bit. Okay. V- v- virgin wage cucks, <laughs> they, they are of the opinion that work is supposed to be, like, grueling and hard yeah. and bad. Yeah. They, sort of, yeah, the, yeah. the word work has negative connotations to them because they are virgin wage cuck bitches. Yeah, and so, yeah. And so they they feel the need that, like, like oh, like, work needs to be hard because I'm hard. Because, you know, it's hard for it me be because I don't want to do any work. I'm just a worthless piece of shit. But, like, artists are doing work objectively. They're just doing work that they enjoy, and and, and that doesn't make them feel bad. I yeah, man. Know. Yeah, man. I don't, like, I don't see like virgin wage cup comments in my purview much. Like, let's just face I facts. Plenty of artists are pretty damn lazy. A lot of people don't realize I don't how. At all. But I, I think the real issue true. here is discrimination. Like artists yeah. being called inherently like in not working hard by some subset of in people. In my experience, mm-hmm. might be really skewed or wrong. But I just mm-hmm. see that if you are obviously working really fucking hard, it's going to show and people are going to not say that shit, right? You know, the only reason I disagree with that, Devu, is because of, like, stuff that, like, Tom will retweet where, like, people I, – I, I don't even – like, I kind of am skeptical as to how often this even happens. But, like, Tom will retweet these, like, horror stories sometimes of, like, someone – like he's like, hey, would you draw my OC? And they're like, sure. It's, like, $100. Like – you expect to be fucking paid for that, you piece of shit? And, you know, like, that attitude is kind of inherent here. It's like, how... Oh, sorry, my, my volume's still fucking high. Uh, it's like, how could you possibly not expect someone to request some form of compensation? I feel like that's just... That's in the mix here somewhere, if you know what I mean? That's like me and me and Devu, uh, me and Devu staged one. Right. Yeah. And it took that you true? seven fucking months to do it, you goddamn non-worker. <laughs> yeah, I just what? sat on it and didn't post it for months, and I don't know why. Yeah, oh. so it was a perfect okay. example of lazy artists. Lazy artists, artists ladies and gentlemen, there yeah. they are. Yeah, but all that, artists don't work. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I can feel why why Munchie would would be so strident at fighting back against this because we all know how hard a worker Munchie is and the yeah. crazy stuff he's always cooking up. Uh, I could, I, and I feel the same way. You know, like the content that I make is is generally very Wait, high effort. I'm currently fighting against was, that, but was what? that not sarcasm? Just now, I was sincere. Just now. Whoa. What do you mean? Oh, you think it feels, I? It feels so weird. Somebody... To have Nate compliment me. Does it? I compliment people all <laughs> that the was, time. B- that was so bizarre. I was just waiting for the like 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 oh we all we all know oh. what Munchie's always cooking up, you fucking faggot. Let's move on to the next question. <laughs> mm-hmm. Dude, I yeah, have so been accused my, my in my life of being question, too ironic, so people can't tell when I'm sincere. Yeah. My answer to yeah, that, that on, question on. is really just <laughs> fucking if you want those people to go away, I think that if you just work harder 
people will see it. You know, like, yes, you could say, oh, it's, it's, you know, it's not actually easy to draw. Yeah, but I see artists mm -hmm. of equal drawing quality who are, like, five times more prolific than the other one, you know? Sure. You know what sure. I mean? Yeah. Like, I there's totally definitely... You know, what, you know what it comes down to? The, the question is, will, like, the artist ever be free of this, like, meme that's, you know, discrimination or whatever? I just don't The think answer that... is, basically what Ben was saying, it's really no, like, because there's this kind of... There's this kind of like competition between the two. Bad. Yeah, because people, people associate work, work with like bad, bad unfun stuff. As long as that exists, right. there will be this but tension here. Oh, but you much, individually can absolutely rise above it by working hard and proving it to people. There's a much stronger reputation yeah. uh, deriding those who are stuck in entry level jobs as being underachievers who coast on minimal, you know, clock in your nine to five every day and then mm -hmm. go home and do nothing, right? So I think though I think that stigma is probably worse and more hard to get rid of. So I think uh, I think everyone in any position is going to be faced with some sort of prejudice about not being hard enough. Yeah, you just got to be harder. Even if, if, even if you're successful and rich, people are going to be like, "Oh, this guy didn't fucking work to be rich." Right? Even yeah. If you, yeah. Then there's the whole yeah, like, so... yeah, then there's the management fallacy where people don't people are like, oh, "You don't do fucking work. You just tell other people to do work. Why are you oh, getting paid man, so that much one money?" That kills me. That's the fucking cap, uh, fucking communist mindset in a nutshell. Yeah, those bitches that, like, need to watch winter wrap up anything. where you see the true Ugh. value of someone whose skill is organization. Yeah, these people need to fucking watch a season one winter fucking wrap up. Organization matters, people. Get the fuck right. you, the, the problem is they just don't understand what managers actually do uh and some are lazy yeah oh, you know what oh, oh, you know what this is actually kind <laughs> of relevant to this in general because like i think of a lot of the reason people think art is just easy and they assume they're lazy is because they don't know how hard artists can actually work because they don't understand it, it, the process yeah of it being made it's that you know idea that like artists are just talented you know yeah like, they just yeah, have that, an innate true. ability that's true. And just for, for my realm of experience, like, when you post a video, bam, the video just, it, for, for the viewer, it didn't exist. Now, magically, it exists. But they don't see the months of work and the editing and the that, recording and, you know, all that shit. That, 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 that's one of the things. Mm -hmm. me, me and Ben, sorry to come back to Reverie's Cop Killers, but, but we're trying out streaming. And that's, like, the main thing that I think, like, like we're, we're trying to see if we want to do that full time. Yeah. And it's looking pretty great, and, like, I think it's well suited to our long-form content. But mm -hmm. the satisfaction that the Reference Cop Killers fans get from just waking up on some random day and you are just blessed out of the blue by by a Reference Cop Killers video by that is, like, yeah. seven yeah. hours Rowdy long. Yeah. yeah. That just it spawns out of nowhere. It's that great. It's a great feeling. Is magical. That it's a great feeling. Magical. I think that's a large part of why YouTube is so fun. You know, it's just fun to be subscribed and see a huge video drop. Everybody it loves it. It plays off that, like, slot machine mentality where it's just like, I wonder if it's yeah. gonna be, someone's going to be here it's, today. But it's the Skinner box. It's like, you know, small, like, random random rewards. Uh, it, more or less, two, yeah. YouTube subscriptions things... are loot boxes. Confirmed. We need to they, they ban really online ban gambling, yeah, ban such them. as subscribing Legal. to anyone on YouTube. It's a gamble, and we can't allow it. We need harsh regulations. That, that, that's why there's such a little Amish population, and, like, demographics on YouTube, is because it's a form of gambling, and they can't do it. That's yeah. the reason. All right, two, two more points before we go on to the next question. Okay. First of all, uh, uh, j just really quick here, uh, unrelated. Uh, I just realized the other day that we actually passed the two-year anniversary of Everest Cop Killers on uh, April 11th. So yeah. Two years what? Years what? Years. Devu was on that first one, so. Right. Yeah. Fucking... Dude, Does Monday, that mean the PCP is also passed? Are you not aware I guess yesterday was yeah. Homestuck Day? Yeah, oh, it was Homestuck right. Day. I know, right? I wish Damn. I hadn't been so sick. I would have fucking done something for it. I would have um, been I, stuck I knew at, you were stuck at home and, and that's I the was most so upset. thing you can do you know, I, I was going to make armor shoot <laughs> fan art because I didn't want to disrespect Homestuck by just like not even acknowledging <laughs> that it was there uh, but, but the real thing that, that actually is, is related to this is the one like 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 the biggest influence or well, the biggest positive influence the PCP has had in my life hmm. uh, that has completely changed the way I perceive something was the insistence and, 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 and me realizing that work is and should be good. Yes, Work should correct. have no negative connotations and should be a pure positive. Be because, 
You know, yeah. like, like, like I, I had grown up and my mom would always come home from work and be like, oh, working is fucking so bad and I hate it so much. Uh. Mm-hmm. But, like, when I, yesterday, yesterday was, or, or two days ago, I, I lose track of all time because I, uh, I don't perceive time the same way other people do. I'm a cryptid. Uh, <laughs> I, I worked for, like, like six hours on that one feeling closer to death like vlog video. I yep. worked so hard mm-hmm. that I had to like get footage and like arrange things. And then after it was done, I was so fucking happy that I had put in the work to make that. And and I had gotten like like this guy to like 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 call me on Skype and I had to like do some like green green screening shit. Right, and I had to like right. arrange a footage like frame by frame for a certain part. It was fucking it was great. And I and I was so happy that I had done it. And and, and just the fact that I could sit back and think, wow. I put in so much work. What what a good what a good day this was. Yeah, that's you play the feeling your cards that I love well more than anything else. And you think real smart and you'll get real lucky. Work can be nothing but good. When it comes to like editing videos, there's lots of parts that are just constantly creative, but then in parts where you it's more like grudge work, uh, then you can put on a podcast because there's parts of your brain that's being unoccupied because it's boring. But then there's parts mm-hmm. where it has to be stupid. There's just no two way. You cannot be cognizant while doing this part. So then you can get drunk for that part. You see, if you play your cards correctly, you could smooth over the experience of every part of the production. And if you can't, then you're doing something wrong. Mm-hmm. And and furthermore. If you are listening to this podcast right now, if you have found your way here and you are you are intelligent enough to be listening to this right now, I <laughs> guarantee you can have the life that you envision for yourself ideally in I would say 5 to 10 years of investment. No matter how If you old, work right fucking now. Yeah, if you get to it now. And whenever you start, like if you don't want to start for a year, that's fine, but then it'll be 5 to 10 years from then. So, you know, whatever you yeah. want to do, buddy, that's that's and the sooner right you'll get now, it to pay off. And you mean, start doing yeah. the thing you want to do, work, think about how to make it a, a, like economically viable. If it will never be economically viable, accept the fact that you'll need to have a side job. And then maybe one day you'll be you'll be doing this 20 years later and you'll realize, huh, you know what? I guess I don't need my side job. I really can do this full time. Because you never know. It, the, what matters is to just be I mean, working towards it. I mean, things it. that you want to do that aren't economically viable, that's probably a hobby. And hobbies are cool. Yeah. So there you go. That's like, true. Hobbies that's true. The ladies love yeah. hobbies, guys. Yeah, the if, ladies if you, love hobbies. If you hobbies. love doing it, and what it takes is working a job to make it possible, then, you mm-hmm. know, you got to do that. You know what I'll but say, if though, it's what, about But if this? it's what you want, then it should be worth it. I, I said before that a lot of this is motivated by my deep sexual insecurities as a man. <laughs> and okay. uh, I feel like that really did motivate me in, in one sense here. That was like, I once heard advice uh, in my in my old days of researching, like, how to be attractive and how to be cool and stuff. And I, I read a thing that just, like, women just love men with passion. And, like, it's you got two choices. One, make your full-time job your passion so that you're excited to go there every day and you have something to talk about to, like, the ladies or whatever so that you, you are full of interesting and exciting things that, that, like, a woman would want to be a part of. There's that option. Or if it's not your full-time job, uh, and if you're if you don't like your full time job, then you've got to make yourself like your hobby, your your purpose in life. You've got to have yeah. something in you that's burning inside as like a desire to yeah. reach, and, yeah. and so that you have things to share with people. That's what yeah. it's all about, man. And and having that inside me both motivated me to like improve my life, so I would like be able, you know, just like all the normal stuff of like wanting the things I want, having you know control over my life and that, and then also it tied into my you know wanting to like be attractive to women and stuff. It was helpful okay. in two ways. Yeah. Nate, I completely agree with everything that you've just said, but I just yes. hate sex so much. So I'm just going to say, <laughs> okay. do everything Nate said, but do it for yourself, for inner fulfillment. Yeah. Oh, what and, I'm and describing is basically a, a cheat code. It's a cheat code if you attach your desire to right. get girls to this that might help that you as like well. It did for me. That is entirely how I've gotten a fucking person. I she, think I like the, 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 uh, the hilarious side effect of that is if you do mm-hmm. Nate's cheat, by the time you get like so fucking good and like your life's yeah. so good you realize you don't even fucking need to fuck that much because that's yeah. like that that's yeah. the real secret dude the real You'll find secret that is it's the... more important and like like there's guys the out there was inside who... you all along there oh, are guys absolutely. out there who do enjoy fucking a new bitch like me, every dude. single day but your average guy what they're interested in is like I, I mean this is my experience i think your most average guy just wants a girlfriend who makes him happy you know he's pretty hot we all want that uh, even whatever way you define that as and uh like you just feel contented like that part of your life is satisfied i think that's a very common thing that a lot of people want and like if i uh, personally on my quest that took fucking a bunch of bitches that's what it took for me to realize that about myself and uh but now i know 
Now I know, and I'm pretty content. I'm pretty yeah, like, content. I would tell my fiance yep. back when we were just like dating and shit. I'd just ask her like, "Why the fuck do you find me attractive? Like I don't, I don't know why I'm that hot to you." And she said, "Okay, well, you know Quentin Tarantino," and I was like, mm-hmm. "What?" And so she compared me to Quentin Tarantino, and that she's into people like Quentin Tarantino. There you go. <laughs> the madman uh, himself, fucking I, shrimpy, hmm. fucking egotistical. A guy like that when when Billy Mitchell has fallen from grace recently for being a cheater she was really sad about that too because she really likes Billy Mitchell but the same reasons and I was like oh wow yeah I, when, when I was I totally get that it's when the I passion was, man yeah when I was 15 I realized oh I should just like not care about like trying to impress girls and I will just make myself impressed with myself and yeah basically ever since then it's been pretty easy you just you just don't even think about yeah, it, and you I, just get pussies I, I jumping def- on we, your ass we, we should, all day. You gotta avoid we, we should them. really have. Mm-hmm. We, we should really have an entire episode about relationships, so 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 we can get into this. But I sure. much more fall in line with the devu of just improve yourself, and obviously people who like the improved you, which is to say the you that you want and should be, will just naturally gravitate towards you. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I totally yeah. That's that's the that's the basic uh, logic behind it. Yeah. Could, totally Yo, agree. we've been going for almost three hours. Yeah, yeah. Damn. 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 We gotta right. start. We gotta start rapping. I've okay. been like All right. the last we, we hour. We've rapping. been talking about getting hype and doing your work. And I've been looking at this file that I started before the podcast. I'm just like, I really just want to fucking work on this. This podcast. Okay, is you okay, know what? I I, I totally feel. You. I totally feel it. For that sake, let's let's just get a question or two. We'll, we'll bang them out real fast. And we'll yeah, yeah, Wrap this shit out. Here's one that I well that I want to answer. By one spar bleakly in in the Patreon lounge, since shitty questions is a big PCP meme now, will there be a questioners rules episode uh, on the podcast? If oh, it's much like, you know, uh, like like commenter and reviewer rules. I think that would be funny and possibly a decent topic. I could see doing I think- it. I, what, what I would want to do is I want I would want to like replace the question section of an episode with questioner rules so we could have like a dual topic kind of because because I don't know if we have enough to say that will fill like an entire episode but oh, if I don't we know just about take that okay. Okay. to like to like address how bad the questions are I think we could do that I'm in favor of doing that I think that would be cool I think would that's it a be, decent wouldn't idea. it be such a boner killer to have a whole episode on like questioner rules and then have to take the shitty questions after laying it all out yeah, but they'd exactly, be perfect exactly. that'd be perfect examples of what what how to do it wrong which I'm sure it will be without a kid without a doubt maybe um maybe. all right well you know what uh, this is okay this is an interesting question grace you asks I got my masters and and I guess they're saying, and I'm still struggle. Oh, and I still struggle to get a job. How can you really stand out? Fancy your resume formatting? Interview tips? So, okay. Well, I that, don't know if we're the ones to be asking about this. Yeah. Yeah. I Like, there's a million things you could say about this. I just, I thought this was a, a heartfelt question that this person's looking for, for information on a little help. So just to, I don't know. My my thoughts on this are, damn, you already got a master's and you're struggling to get a job. Okay, here's my, here's my real question. Okay, like, what's the master's in? I assume there's not a lot of demand for it. Uh, I mean, I suppose you could be shit and you could be like bad. That's entirely possible. Um, yep. Okay, like there's no cheat to like one one weird old tip to like stand out or anything. I would say what what people want is just competency. That at the at the end of the day, they're gonna take whoever looks like they're best at the job. So like, how do you demonstrate that? Here's what I would do. I don't know what your field is. For me, like one thing that really impressed people when I was applying for programming jobs was the work I did on my own outside work, just the side programming stuff I had going on. So I don't oh, know, maybe you're like, yeah. uh, maybe you're fucking a writer or something. You're trying to get like some job writing for a magazine or something. Like have a blog, have written to it, try to make it popular. You know, just you know, go through the motions of doing the thing that they want. Like nobody wants a college kid who's only learned a bunch of bullshit that probably isn't practically applicable. They want someone who's in the fucking trenches already and they know can easily plop into a slot. So what like resume formatting, interview tips, like I don't know, if you have like terrible time interviewing and you're constantly fucking it up, then like yeah, obviously you should work on that in in whatever way. I'm sure there's lots of resources for that. Fancy resume formatting, man, we're just we're, we're beating around the edges. The core issue is have be able to tell them why you're great and yeah. how you're perfect for this and all that shit. Like you, know? you want them to believe that you're worth the job. Do you believe that you're worth the job? Good. Yeah. Yeah. You got to you got to impress them. Uh, a, a, a little peacocking in terms of what you can do does not hurt. Peacocking never the- hurt. 
Never That's, heard right. Of That's right. That's <laughs> right. A, a K-step in the questions bar asks, thoughts on the Tig with Tig doc? We were actually planning on doing I a, thought we a, should do glasses. that as the topic yeah. today. Nobody wanted to do it because they didn't want to get into the weeds of oh, the drama. Oh, dude, I didn't okay, even I want just to talk about the drama. Literally just I just now thought I figured it would be cool to talk about our well, history okay. with Tig with Tig. Bringing it up is inherently linked because it's popular right now. You know, it's popular right. to talk about right now because of the drama. I mean, uh, I, no, I, no, I just oh, figured it out. Here's how we can do an episode about okay. it. The episode will be called "Internet Content Creator Group Incompetence," or maybe something shorter. That way, we can compare and contrast okay. our own competence or lack thereof to Tigwitigs. Because there's a well, lot of okay. times where here's, I'm thinking, "Man, we sure are a lot so less masturbatory." <laughs> yeah. Here's, here's my. Re I mean, there are many differences, and I guess there's some similarities. But like right out of the gate, here here are my thoughts on the Tigwitig doc K step. I have not read it, and I am not a lawyer. I have. I don't trust anyone who just says. I had X experience. I demand evidence before I think anything about anyone. And to do otherwise, anyone in the world is immoral. So I hope that, like, I, everyone, we could, what, what are you supposed to say right now? Like, oh, they're all bad because a lot of people said they were bad. Is that true? Where's the proof? Like, did, were the police involved? Like, there was, like, sexual no. allegations. Uh, is any of that substantiated? I don't fucking know. I have no grounds to make any assessment whatsoever. And frankly, it pisses me off that people just take the word of people when they just assert no, yeah, things agreed. without evidence. Agreed. No, I Nate, think, to me, this dude, is... Don't you think it's fucked up that, like, we were, th this culture now is just, like, an allegation can and tank an entire yeah, business. That's How the problem. That? That's the problem. But, and but, I read I mean, some of that stuff. Most of it is people being awkward and just not communicating clearly. Like some people have sexual crime allegations. Literally go to the cops and tell them everything and work it out. It's not the court of public opinion's job to judge yeah. if you were like abused at your job. It's your job to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Why, are, like, why am I, I involved? I, I don't shouldn't care be at all about the um the issue of like whether or not they should like it should be sued or some shit like that or defamation yeah, yeah. like wait, what is tig would take actually tanking right now as a result is channel awesome like actually like financially I, 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 I believe that as a note like basically none of their fans gave a shit and that it didn't matter right at all exactly for, for me all didn't, like of a course. bunch of people leave the site though like I a, a bunch of people, people have been people leaving have been the site leaving. for the reasons that have been explained in the document that it's it's shit to work for them right but for me, okay, what I take I, away yeah. from it is it's an interesting case study in incompetence and hubris. Basically, imagine if you, listening Have at you home, read it, Davu? Have you read I it? I skimmed a shitload of it, and I read all of Lindsay Ellis's part because she's the one good writer in the group. So, okay, so be aware. That's what we're working with. That's the and, information. And we have secondhand have reports that. being referred to Hold by on. Davu now. Okay. Not only have I skimmed most of it, and mm -hmm. a lot of it was the same complaints listed over and over again. So I've, I saw the gist yeah, of it. Yeah. But also, I am the one in this group who's seen the most Tig with Tig with, like, Hippo at a close second, I believe, right? Okay, so I do right. have a lot of understanding of this group. I've been, I mean, I, I've started following them, like, ten goddamn years ago, right? And it totally makes sense to me now. Imagine if you, as in you, the audience, listening at home, did some weird shit on the internet that somehow got popular, and now suddenly you have all this power, you're Doug Walker, you have all this power to get a bunch of little Spurgies flocking to your throne to mm. mooch off of your fame, and now you have the power to coordinate them to do these giant skit movies together. If you guys didn't know, that was where most of these complaints come from, is, is the production right, of yeah, the big yeah. Tigwitig crossover movies, where they did these the anniversary stuff. Yeah. yeah, and it was like making a whole movie, but like, you know, home video style. And people were just explaining in depth how Doug and his brother Rob and the producer Mike McCod were just totally didn't know the single first fucking thing that they were doing but because they were in this position of power no one could like question them and mike mccod would like you know bat down anyone who did question them so doug always saw it as everything is going really well and everybody's really happy but then meanwhile the people working yeah. for them are like why the f you didn't think to give us food on this set what the fuck right like oh I, that's, I, such, I that's that that so that's so I, uh, retarded that like this uh, yeah. is like the I, major I, I, I issue agree, they man. didn't even give us food or water on the set like this is the big issue this is what you've got this is the damning evidence oh my god shut the fuck up i no, don't no, no, no. care about your stupid baby I, problems I'm, fucking I'm, go I mean, to starbucks I mean, it, across I mean, it's the street. embarrassing like it's embarrassing that they 
would make such an oversight. No, no, no. I think it's absolutely appropriate that most of Tigwood Takes fans don't care and they continue to watch the videos. Yes, I don't think... Well, okay, it does sound like Mike McCod might be kind of a bad person. Doug and Rob are just sort Why? of like... Oh. Why would he be a bad person? What well, has he done? Well, because he sort of was a fucking creep about, like, people, like, being critical of the website. Not, like, damning critical. Not, like, defamation critical. But, like, saying problems that they have that are pretty innocuous. Mike McCod would be like, shut the fuck up. You don't get to say that, right? Or you're fired, right? Other He's a that, man defending his business. I whatever. see no issue I don't here know unless he did something the directly more criminal. I can speak on behalf of Doug and Rob Walker. They're just, they were just fucking overprivileged fucking white boys who don't understand, like, how to take care of shit. And it pissed a lot of people off. I don't even agree with that. I don't even agree with that shit. Like, what the hell? I, no, I, I no. didn't read the fucking document. I don't deserve to comment on this. None of us do. I bet the people who fucking wrote the thing don't even know half of what the fuck they're talking about. Because none of this shit's serious. And it's all, like, little baby complaints. And, uh, if it's more than a baby complaint, it should be with the fucking police. It should not be the court of fucking opinion, public opinion. Uh, I just, like, this is such a bitch move. No, no, Like, no, they're no. just I trying to ruin the reputation of a fucking company. And what did they really do? They didn't give us fucking water on our fucking coffee break when we were at this big meetup thing. Bring a fucking water bottle. Go to the fuck to Shaw's and buy one. No, what no, the no, fuck let me explain. ever, man? Yes, I do totally agree that this is why they were able to be kicked around so much and and and, and I know people are going to get mad at me because I'm sure there's more serious stuff than what I'm bringing up. I'm just focusing on the stuff that I'm biased toward. That's exactly why no one should listen to me either. No one should care to anyone on this issue. Well, but I'm Nate, sorry, Dubu. Please go on. Hey, about, I actually it... like kind of have to go. So like, if we don't wrap up soon, I'm I'm gonna have to leave. Okay, I'll say this. Okay, okay. okay. I'll say this. Yeah. Right <laughs> the thing is, the reason why these people were kicked around is that they're all talentless fucks. Like almost all of Tig Tig is just non-entities, right? Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like there was no formula more boring that was that was brought to prominent popularity on the internet until the CinemaSins fucking plague hit the world, right? So, like, mm -hmm. they didn't really have any power. They didn't have the ability to, like, strike out and do their own thing. They were completely leeching off of Doug, Doug's popularity. So you can see in the article, most of them writing their complaints in this document are too incompetent to make a compelling case. I had to sort of unpack what they're saying, detach mm -hmm. what they're actually saying from what they think they're saying, and then come out with an accurate explanation. They're putting it like, we've been mistreated and abused and hurt and uh, fuck them. And there's a little bit sure. of that. But again, Lindsay Ellis, the nostalgia chick, the one really talented person who ever graced that website, her whole case was presented much better. She simply explained how Doug was not capable of arranging this shit. It was disorganized. People were, like, he was constantly fighting with his brother, like, in front of people about, like, script disagreements. Sounds reasonable. It was just mm -hmm. embarrassing. And wasn't so. Is that really what it is, though? It was just an embarrassing situation. Is that the crime? It was that embarrassing was and here? also way too stressful and stupid. And it could have been so much better. Like she even explained. Like I went up to Doug, being like, "Yo, we're on a set. We're not." Their, their first big movie was like in the middle of nowhere, I think. There weren't a whole lot of restaurants around. And she said, yo, what about food? And Doug was like, I don't know. But then like fucking Spoonie came up and said, well, you know, food is typically provided on a movie set. And he was like, hmm, maybe you're, maybe you're right, Spoonie. Maybe I should give Well, money. lock up the food. fucking misogynist, I guess. Only I know, cares right? about what men say. Is I know, I know. Now? Anyway, the point is, it's just a story of incompetence and hubris and not realizing that like people aren't having nearly as much fun as you are and i totally yeah. believe that happened i believe all of that i 100 yeah. percent believe every story in there but i just don't give a shit yeah but Nate, because i don't is, think these are serious is, problems when this except for the sexual allegations take right. them to the fucking cops yeah i'm not a yeah dude police. but dude like when pe people portray this as the fall of the nostalgia critic it's like no Get the fuck out this of is here. just at, Finally, people are pointing fingers when they should have been all along. Like, finally, these fucking people I don't people even like any of these themselves. people. I, I watched this. I have some positive feelings towards the nostalgia critic because I liked him. I just don't like to see fucking witch hunts. And there's too many fucking witch hunts these days. People yeah. are fucking cowards. Fucking talked. I mean, whatever. You know what? Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> I love this fiery Nate, but we should leave now. Yeah. <laughs> you escape my wrath Please. before I turn it against you. Okay. We gotta get the fuck out of here. I, I have nothing else to say on this matter. Anyone else want to comment on this? It's gay, uh, and I don't like it. Uh, I, Jobs I agree, suck. I agree End that, of the episode. I agree that if uh, the uh -huh. allegations are criminal in nature, then they should be taken up with the police. I, I just really don't think the people, like us, the viewers, have should have like any involvement in any of this. 
It's like the whatever people can tell their stories if yeah. they're fucked up. It's just the way this is presented. Well, is we're like at a point now where gosh, you can do more damage to somebody on Twitter than through legal means. That's a good point, Tom. That's a ba damn good point. Basically, and we shouldn't what forget I'm it. saying here is way back in 2008 when this site was brand fucking new. I made a blog post. I made a different forum post saying, "Yo, you people like don't know what you're doing. This is a giant shit show of talentless hackery." Sure. And everyone mm -hmm. came down my fucking door, being like, "Oh, you're being I a troll. Why. Ban, ban, ban." Right, but now ten uh -huh. fucking years later, the people who ran, the people who consisted of most of the shitty content on this site, are finally calling mm. it like it always was, and I always fucking knew it. It's a fuck. It was well, a. It's go, always dude. been a total happy Devu shit show. was right. Devu wins. Devu yeah. wins this episode. Yeah, all right. Devu wins. That's I'm the satisfied. Episode. Devu wins. <laughs> all right. I think we're done, everybody. Please, yeah. God, that's God, end let of our it questions. End. All right, all right. So, Patreon, if you uh, like this episode, if you didn't unpledge, like remember little... most of those Sorry. questions we just read came from our Patreon lounge. So give us a fucking dollar at least on the fucking Patreon.com slash the Procrastinators, and we're more likely you to see your question this there. Sick ass Discord, I then guess. you're in, you're on in. It's a, it's an active Discord. You want to be in on this shit? Yeah. Uh, you have we got the feed for all the PSP stuff. It's great. Uh, beyond that, if you pledge five dollars, you get all the bonus episodes. Munchie, what was the last bonus episode? The bonus episode that we last recorded was Radcon 3. Right? Yeah, that's the one. That's the yeah, one. Yeah, Radcon 3. There Woo! may have, there may have been a, 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 a snippet. And explain in depth. There it's may a have step been a step by step <laughs> process. I think we I think what we should be have done is put the bonus episode clip at the beginning of this episode, but I don't know. I'll, we'll figure it out later. Uh, that's it. Uh, uh, follow us at Twitter at TBCrastinators. Everything gets announced. There, all the show that comes out still rolling out tons of Radcon Three content. So you probably oh, want to be checking I, the fucking I Radcon Three playlist. Amount accumulated. Yeah, it's it's not anywhere I, close to done. Uh, so I have not released any of my stuff. Ben, what the hell I, is going I have not on? Been on the ball, but it'll come. It's coming. Okay. All right. E E Ethan is editing the Spirit Science Lecture as we fucking speak oh, right God. fucking now. I'm cooming, just thinking <laughs> of it. I know. Uh, what else we and, got? And, and I made Nevrodrigus Copulars, and I've already put out those two vlogs. Yeah, it's That's coming. Right. It's fucking, it's pouring out. There's big stuff still on the horizon here, and yeah. uh, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Uh, oh, and uh, uh, everybody who, uh, all the backers, here's your just update. We are still getting together the paperwork to get everybody their stuff, but it is coming. Don't worry. I'm on the case. You'll get it pretty soon. Uh, all right. I think all that's right. it. We are Sick. out of here, everybody. We will see you next fucking week with another episode of Memes and Dreams. Ooh, Bye. Ooh, uh, Bye. Later, boys. Yeah. Yeah. Stupid boys. Yeah. yeah. Uh. I'm supposed to be working right now. I'm supposed to be